It is a beautiful day in Little Rock, Arkansas for the 7A state championship game between Bentonville and Fayetteville. It's an all Northwest Arkansas state championship game and the crowd is packing in for this one on this gorgeous Saturday in Central Arkansas. I'm RJ Hawk along with Bobby Swafford and Bobby, this is a little bit different of a championship because for the last six years we've seen a Central Arkansas team named Bryant That's here right. at the championship and it's different because you've got two Northwest Arkansas teams this year. I feel like we got in the time machine and jumped all the way back to the mid-2010s because this was what it used to be. It used to be two Northwest Arkansas teams. We're starting to see that thing balance out. The power swung back to the central, but thanks to two wins in the semifinals last week and a really impressive performance by Bentonville. It's all NWA today. And rightfully so. That both these two teams have a plethora of talent. And, and we're going to show throughout the game today, there's college coaches from all over the country here at this game today. That's right. I and mean, this is the highlight. This is supposed to be the crown jewel of football in our states the largest classification you've got the two best teams one team who's perfect on the season in Fayetteville this is supposed to be the heavyweight match that's why all the big-time college coaches that's why the big-time college coaches from our state are also going to be here today well it ought to be a lot of fun we are expecting temperatures to be in the 60s today for this you it's kind of crazy to think about we are in December we've got the windows open uh, and it's just a perfect day for a football game. It went from a typhoon Thursday night for the eight-man game to absolutely perfect fall weather here. And we can't ask for a better situation. The fans are going to take advantage of it. The players are going to take advantage of it. It's going to be about who's the better football team today. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. In fact, right before we went on, I looked out back and I uh, looked on 430. The line of cars is going down 430 right now. So uh, if you're coming, you better come now because the line is filling up for this 7A state championship game. When we come back, we will go around the brackets, look at some players and look at keys to the game as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Arkansas PBS has been a trusted resource. Our high quality programs are seen by viewers in every corner of our state, making on-air sponsorship a solid investment. Aligning your business with Arkansas PBS offers a powerful blend of community engagement, corporate philanthropy, and cause marketing. And our viewers remember and appreciate businesses that support our programs. Contact us today for more information on sponsorship opportunities. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever and know they're going to get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job and, and I think it's part of education. The commitment it takes to be a winner on the field is the same as the commitment Centennial shows its customers. Patience, perseverance, commitment, and resilience are key ingredients for success, both on and off the field. Whether you're cheering on your home team or needing encouragement starting a new business, let Centennial Bank help you make plans for your future. Centennial, for all of life's moments. Member FDIC. Counting you down for kickoff in the 7A state championship game between Bentonville and Fayetteville, and it is going to be a fun one between both these two schools. It's been a while since uh, both these two teams have played each other in a state championship game, and uh, looking forward to seeing what the talent is on the field right now. Well, let's go ahead and look on how both these teams got here. We'll first start with the Bentonville Tigers, Bobby, and uh, they had to go through the defending champs to get here. The number two seed coming from the Western Conference had a bye on the bottom half of the bracket in that first round, but then they handled Cabot, a game that thought maybe a trip up. You never know how teams are going to handle a bye, but you mentioned in the, uh, in the semifinals, they had to go on the road to Bryant. It's not that Bentonville won that game, RJ. It's how they won it. They're up 52-28 uh, late in the third quarter. Dominant performance, timely turnovers, and that's why the Tigers are back in the championship game for the second straight season. Well, and not only that, but they've got an excellent wide receiver in C.J. Brown, who has got over 1,200 yards receiving this year. He's actually an Arkansas command. Yeah, 55 catches, 1,255 yards, 15 touchdowns. Anytime number two for Bentonville gets his hands on the football, he's got a chance to take it the distance. You mentioned he's committed to Arkansas. Uh, he's got offers to Minnesota and some other places. He's a big-time player, and Fayetteville's got to know where number two is at all times. 
Well, let's look at the other side of the field and it's the Fayetteville Purple Dogs and how they got here. You know, Fayetteville again, like Bentonville, had the buy in the first round. They're the number one seed from the Western Conference. A perfect regular season, but tested by Fort Smith Southside in that first round or the second game, first, second round, their first game, 30 to 24. And then they took down Conway, a classic in that one, 24 21. Had to get a defensive stop in the final minute of the game to take down the Wampus Cats and Fayetteville for the second time in three years playing for a 7A state championship. You know, last night in the 6A game, we saw two of the top recruited uh, quarterbacks in the country. But one guy that everybody always leaves off the list is Drake Lindsey, who is headed to the University of Minnesota. Yeah, 3,300 3, yards passing, 49 touchdowns. But the number to remember, two interceptions all season long. Four interceptions in two years as a high school quarterback. Really impressive. Six, six, six foot six, 240 pounds, has a massive arm makes all the throws you got to cover for 40 50 maybe even 60 yards because he can push it down the field and he is a heck of a football player let's go down to Kyle uh, Kyle Deckelbaum on the sidelines Kyle I know that you've been uh, roaming the sidelines in during the pregame you've seen some folks but boy it's an absolutely gorgeous day here at one Memorial Stadium my friends first of all great to be with you I am way overdressed it is absolutely perfect conditions we've had years guys we're in heavy coats it's uh, uh freezing we will absolutely take this this is absolutely amazing you know this afternoon a 7a west team will win a state championship for the first time since 2016 that's when Fayetteville beat North Little Rock in fact this is the first time two 7a west teams are playing for the state championship since 2015 when Fayetteville beat Harbor Bentonville coach Jody Grant says all the West coaches get together in the offseason. They try to strategize. How do we get the focus back to the West? Because all we've heard about is Bryant and North Little Rock for pretty much the last decade. And then, in fact, Jody Grant texted Fayetteville coach Casey Dick after the two teams won their semifinal games to congratulate each other. But I can promise you this, guys, the camaraderie ends there. The rivalry will be renewed here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Kyle. And, and he's exactly right, Bobby. I mean, you... You think to the last six years, it, it has been a dominant performance by the Hornets. And what Bentonville did in this semifinal game, I, I tell you what, they, they came out and they were the better team in the semifinal. They're going to have to do the same thing today when you look at the keys to this contest. Bentonville has to get after Drake Lindsay, the quarterback. They've got to force the Fayetteville QB into situations that he hasn't been put in all season long. You've got to get into his face. You've got to put pressure on him. Try to get him out of the pocket because I mentioned his size, 6'6", 240. He's not going to, not a huge threat running the football. Try to get in the quarterback's face, force an errant throw. And the keys for Fayetteville, this is the team that has not lost this year, and, and they've got an uphill task with this Bentonville team. Yeah, air it out. I mean, you've got a quarterback who can launch at 60 yards no matter the win today as the Bulldogs take the field. Trust your quarterback, rely on the big arm, and you have to neutralize broken coverage on the other side. You can't let things break down. Bentonville, we talked about the receiver for C.J. Brown and how good he is in the passing game. Bentonville will always be a run-first football team. They're going to try to pound the rock and then let Carter Nye, the quarterback, try to hit him in the, the play-action game. There are the Bentonville Tigers as they're getting ready to make their way out of the tunnel, and they're coming on the field here at War Memorial Stadium. We talked about how great of a day it is, and let's go ahead and look at the weather forecast for this one. Boy, you can't beat it. As we are going to have a kickoff of 54 degrees, mostly cloudy, slight wind out of the north, and it is going to be a lot of fun. Great atmosphere here at War Memorial Stadium. Yeah, you can't ask for a better day, and for you and I who were sitting here Thursday night, you're wondering, Okay, this is going to be miserable. That's why the midfield logo is practically gone because the rain washed it away. But it's, there are no conditions are going to affect the, the play today. It's all going to be about who is the better football team right now at this stage is going to be your 7A state champion. Well, we're just about set and ready to go. The Fayetteville Purple Dogs, they have, they're wearing their black pants with purple tops trimmed in white with their purple helmets. And there, there's Bentonville, and they're all white uniforms trimmed in black with black numerals and black helmets and we are just about set and ready to go bobby i'm looking forward to this one i i we've heard you know if you're in central arkansas you, you don't get to see these teams very often but you've heard about drake lindsey i've not got to see him this year um really looking forward to seeing what he can do on the field yeah it's a quarterback 
everybody talked about Walker White, of course, in Central Arkansas, and everybody talked about Kane Archer, who we saw last night. Not a lot of people outside of Northwest Arkansas have talked about Drake Lindsey. He can make all the throws. He's going to be really impressive. But I, also, Carter Nye doesn't get the respect maybe that he deserves either. 2,800 yards passing, the Bentonville quarterback, 24 or 29 touchdowns, excuse me, five interceptions, and that includes two games that he missed due to injury. And we're going to get a good look at Carter Nye first as Bentonville is going to receive this opening kickoff. So for Fayetteville, kicking off is going to be Trey Byers, and he'll have that into the end zone, and that's where we'll start first and 10 for Bentonville from the 20-yard line. We've already crowned an eight-man champion, a 6A champion, and a 2A champion. We've got the 7A today, and then tonight it's the 5A championship, which ought to be a good one between Shiloh Christian and Parkview. If you believe in trends, Fayetteville may like this statistic. Every team who's coming to the championship game undefeated this weekend has won. Rector at 8-man, Bigelow at 2A, and then again last night Greenwood at 6A. So the perfect teams have prevailed up to this point. We'll see if that holds true. Carter Knight is the quarterback for the Bentonville Tigers. He'll have three wide set to the right side. Fakes the handoff, going to look to throw. Nye going big ball right out of the gates. Has a man and it goes just out of his reach as he was trying to hook up with C.J. Brown. And Brown had about five yards in between him and the corner. Uh, one of the keys to the game, no busted coverages. And right there, the very first play of the contest, Fayetteville had one. And that's where you see the, the speed and the explosiveness of C.J. Brown. Almost a big play for 80 yards on the first one, but Nye just missed it. So that brings up a second down and 10 for the Tigers. They'll have Jason Gilmore, the running back in the backfield. And they'll come with a tight formation this time with two wide receivers set to the right side. And we've got our first penalty of the ball game as Fayetteville is going to jump into the neutral zone. Encroachment, defense, five yard penalty, take it down. So that gives Bentonville a free five yards as that moves the ball up to the 25 yard line to bring up a second down and five. Carter Nye in the shotgun stands at the 20 yard line. We'll look to throw on an out route as he's got a man out at the 30 yard line. Coming up with the reception for Bentonville is Karsten Pate. A really good throw there, a long throw. Cutter Knight just drops it over the defender's head. Uh, perfectly placed ball, pick up 11 and a first down. Moves the ball to the near hash as they move towards the south end zone here at War Memorial Stadium, just underway in the first quarter. Wing back set off the left side, two wide receivers to the left. Nine, going to hand it off. Goes left side to Gilmore, and Gilmore's got a great running lane. We do have a penalty marker down back at the 36-yard line. He's got enough for a first down, but hold everything. Let's find out what the penalty is. It will be a 13-yard gain. Gilmore with 855 yards on the season. We'll have to see if this play stands. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Come with the 15 yard face mask, and that's going to get uh, Bentonville in some great field position. That, that'll march it all the way into the Fayetteville territory. It's a great start for Bentonville. You missed the, the big play, the first throw of the contest, but back to back double digit plays, and now the 15 yard penalty. They're knocking on door of the 40. This is a Bentonville team that is averaging 46 and a half points per game this year. And comes in motion at CJ Brown from right to left. And I hand it off to Ficklin. Ficklin works the left side, and he'll pick up about four yards on the play, and that'll bring up second down. It's a last name a lot of football fans in our state are going to recognize. The older brother, Josh, was a stud running back for Bentonville, and now they just kind of pass the torch down to younger brother, Chris, the sophomore. So it's second down and six as the ball is at the 37-yard line. Carter Nye is going to be in the shotgun. Chris Bicklin is the running back. They're going to hand it to him. He'll work right side, gets past the 35-yard line, and taken down at the 34. 
pair of Fayetteville defenders, including Noah Jansky, converged to make the play there. Son of the athletic director, but now it's third and short. You stick with the passing game, or you trust your quarterback Carter and I to go through the air. The way the ground game's getting that push. I might just lean on those big guys. You've got to believe this is going to be two down territory if they don't pick up the first down here on third. Probably in that no man's land. Let's go ahead and go for it on fourth. And what we've seen out of quarterbacks in the state championship, a lot of quarterbacks run. Carter Nye is not much of a runner. He's only run for 184 yards this year. And now we've got penalty flags. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, you've got to change your philosophy. Likely was going to be a run there as they overloaded the left side, but a false start penalty pushes it back to third and call it seven, maybe even eight. Now we'll see what Carter and I can do through the air. Obvious passing down right here as there's five wide in the formation. Nye is going to be alone in the backfield. DJ Brown's the bottom of your screen. Nye takes the snap. Going to roll right. Looking, has a man all alone, down the 10, five touchdown. Coming up with it was J.J. Spafford for his third touchdown of the season. The Fayetteville safety kept his eyes in the backfield and kind of rolled the coverage down on C.J. Brown, who was running a hook route right about the first down marker and left the slot receiver wide open down the seam. An easy toss and catch, and Bentonville strikes first. On the kick. For Bentonville is Nico Martinovic as it's up and good. And Bentonville with 9.45 to play in the first quarter. They strike first, 7 to nothing. Let's head down to Kyle Deckelbaum on the sidelines after that first score. Kyle. Well, guys, I tell you, I'm standing on the Fayetteville sidelines, and I think after that very first pass, you could hear a few guys kind of look at each other and go, wow, Carter has an arm. And I think that's sort of a, a surprise. Even though these two teams know each other so well. But let's try to set up here. Drake Lindsay coming onto the field for the first time for this Fayetteville offense. And uh, P.J. Fleck, the Minnesota coach, the Golden Gophers coach, is here. I do think, guys, we will start to see a few more Arkansas coaches trickle in as this game goes on. I did see Kenny Guyton here in attendance as well. Thank you, Kyle. As... We've got 9.45 to play here in the first quarter. Martinovic is going to kick off as it'll sail down to the eight-yard line before being brought up by Fayetteville. Welcome back to Miller Field. We've got penalty flags down. Bringing it up for the Purple Dogs is going to be Katavian Taylor, and Taylor's going to bring it all the way out to the 36-yard line. But We've got penalty flags down back at the 14. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team. Penalties half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, after that block in the back, it'll bring the football back. And so Fayetteville's going to be pinned back on their first drive to start the game. Never want to start behind the chains, and Fayetteville's doing so already here on first down as they back it up on the penalty for the 15. So they're going to start this drive inside their own 10-yard line. Probably doesn't change a whole lot what Fayetteville is wanting to do on this opening drive. Now they open it up in the 7-8 championship game in the shadow of their own goalpost. So Drake Lindsay is the quarterback with Christian Setzer in the backfield. He'll split out wide to the left. Lindsay looking to throw. It's deflected at the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up second down. A great job by the Bentonville defensive pass rush to realize they weren't going to get to the quarterback in time. Just get your hands up and knock down the first pass of the contest. You know, it's pretty impressive, Bobby, that you go through an entire high school football season and you only have two interceptions. You would think that there would be more deflections and things like that to, to cause an interception, but he has been very, very accurate this year. I don't see many of his passes knocked down either, coming from the six foot six arm slot. They give it to Setzer. Setzer will take it out to the nine yard line. Picks up two yards on the play to bring up a third down now for Fayetteville. Third and long is obviously the, the down and distance you want to stay out of, but Fayetteville's faced with one 
on this opening drive. Lindsey calls for it, fakes the handoff, going to look to throw, goes across the middle of the field, in and out of the hands of his intended target. That, try, that time trying to hook up with his wide receiver, McKinney, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, the Bentonville defensive back did a nice job of just dropping back into coverage and undercut that route, and Fayetteville was really fortunate that one wasn't picked off, and now they're going to have to punt it away from their own end zone. On the punt, there's going to be Nathan Catchell. And he's going to fake it. He's going to take off running. He's got the first down and more as he got past the 20-yard line. I don't think that was a design play, Bobby, because he was about to have that punt blocked, and he pulled it down and ran. That is great awareness by the faithful punter, Catchell. You're, you're exactly right, RJ. That, that rusher from his right is just pretty much came unblocked, and so he just tucks it and sees a lane and picks up the first down. A huge, huge break for Fayetteville and a heads-up play by the punter. So it's first and 10 now with the ball at the 24-yard line. Drake Lindsay comes back out onto the field with 8.51 to play here in the first quarter. Christian Setzer is lined up to the right of him. Two wide receivers on the near side. Takes the handoff, going to look to throw. He'll step up in the pocket, going to look to run. Gets past the 25, out to the 26-yard line. Pickup of two yards that time. Again, that's, that's a prime example of Lindsey, not a huge threat to run the football, and a, a nice job by Bentonville's coverage to, to stay with their receiver. And when the play breaks down, it's allowed time for the pass rush to get there and hold them to a game of two. Second down and eight. Setzer goes in motion. Lindsey. Making the throw, swings it out to Setzer in the flats. He'll get past one man and fall forward at the 29-yard line. A really great play in the open field by Daniel McCoy, the junior linebacker for Bentonville. That's a play that's tough to make out in space, but he takes down Setzer one-on-one -on -one and forces Fayetteville into a th another third and as you call this a long distance, six yards. Four wide receivers in the formation. Setzer's going to line up to the left of Drake Lindsey. He'll take the snap, going to look to throw. Works it back left side. Did he catch it? No, he's out of bounds. What a great job going up, but just couldn't get his feet down. Coming up with the reception that time was Mason Spencer, but he was out of bounds. A great play and great camera work there. Spencer elevates, but can't get the foot in bounds. Comes down on the line. Now going to force a, another punt attempt. See if we actually see foot on ball for this one. Nathan Ketchell is the punter. Got a 31-yard average this year. It's going to be a high snap, but hold everything. We've got whistles. And we've got a penalty flag down on the near side, and it's a false, false start. start on Fayetteville. Offense. Five-yard penalty. They got bailed out Fourth there. Down. The penalty likely saves them a disastrous play. Oh, no. Yeah, that, the the ball went over the punter's head, and I think Casey Dick will take that penalty all day. Yeah. We've got to sit, settle in. You, you can tell that Bentonville is the more calm team. There's no pressure on them. They're not the undefeated team. Map is back. Kick is away. We'll take a nice Fayetteville roll inside the 35, still going down to the 32-yard line. So with that punt, Benville leads 7-0 seven with 7.26 to play here in the first quarter. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. We all know the best ways to take care of our teeth, like brushing twice a day and flossing once a day. But there's another small thing you can do that protects your teeth in a big way. If you or your child is involved in contact sports, wearing a mouth guard is important to protect teeth. Mouth guards cover teeth and gums to prevent and reduce injury to teeth. 
lips, and gums. There are several varieties of mouth guards, so you can find one that is affordable and easy to use. A mouth guard should fit properly, be durable and easy to clean, and not restrict speech or breathing. Talk with your dentist about which mouth guard is best for you or your child's needs. At Delta Dental of Arkansas, we're proud to be the champions of your smile. For more helpful oral health tips and information, visit www.deltadentalar.com. Sanderton is the finest seaside resort on the whole coast. I should very much like to see it, sir. It's Tom's brother, Sydney. Miss Hayward. What is your opinion of him? Never met anyone quite so confounding. Everybody is waiting so they can have my money. You have no idea what I'm prepared to do. Should not a good marriage be based on mutual love and affection? Oh, not that again. <laughs> Just be careful. Careful of what, Papa? Everything. Sanditon. Available now with PBS Passport. The Arkansas Department of Health is proud to support, spotlight, and celebrate Arkansas student-athletes and Arkansas PBS sports. Escape the vape. Learn more of the hazards of vaping at projectprevent.org. Carter Nyes back in on the field with his Benville Tigers as they lead 7 to nothing. A fake a handoff to go with a quick pass, but it was deflected away at the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up second down. A great play by Trey Lyle. Just get his hand up, get out in the passing lane. Bat that one away. Recognizes the, the quick pass to the flat. Gets his left paw up and swats her down. So that brings up a second down and 10 with the ball at the 32 yard line. Jason Gilmore now the running back in for Bentonville. As they'll have two wide receivers to the near side. They fake it to Gilmore, gonna look to throw. Nye across the middle of the field and J.J. Spafford can't come up with a one-handed catch, and that'll bring up third down and 10. Uh, they didn't hook up there. That's a really impressive throw by Nye. He threads the needle right between the dropping defenders. Just can't make the play. Just a little too far out of the reach of Spafford. So it's third down and 10. Five wide in the formation for Bentonville. And up is the Fayetteville defense. Ah, he's going to look to throw. He's under pressure. He just throws it away and has nowhere to go. And it'll bring up fourth down for Bentonville. It's a really good job of Fayetteville's defense to disguise. They look like in their cover zero, just man across. And as soon as they snap the football, you can see so many moving parts for Fayetteville. They just drop into the hook lanes, try to pr protect, protect that line to gain. Really impressive job by Fayetteville's defense to get the three and outs. So Bentonville is going to put the ball at the 32-yard line. Back deep for Fayetteville is going to be Landon Holzhauer. One is away and it's a good one. Holzhauer is going to take it and fair catch it down to 32 yard line. So Fayetteville is going to have another shot at it with 7.06 to play here in the first quarter. Just doesn't seem like either one of these teams, Bobby, can really get much of a rhythm right now offensively. I know Bentonville scored that one, but both teams have seemed a little out of rhythm. Yeah, and, and good defenses are going to do that to you. You know, this is the feeling out process. Uh, it's a really interesting tidbit Chris Young, the Greenwood coach, gave us. You're going to see a lot of different things that teams haven't done in the first quarter, quarter and a half. But after that, you're going to settle into really who you are and the reason why you're in a championship game. Here's Lindsay flipping out left side as he was able to get it over out to Landon Jones. And Jones will bring it up for about a six, maybe seven yard gain. It's just a long handoff there. You swing it out to the short receiver, two receivers out in front to block for him. They got three yards to get as they're going to bring it up. And Setzer trying to go up the middle of the field. He may have and got back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up third down. So 
Well, that brings up a third down and two with the ball at the 41-yard line. Clock rolling. Stacked receivers on both sides of the offense. Fetzer will move up and stay on the left side of Lindsey. Lindsey looking to throw, has a man across the middle of the field and stays on his feet at the 40, gonna be drugged down at the 32 yard line. That's a great job by Jason Delamar, the wide receiver, the leading wide receiver for this Fayetteville team. It's a great route combination there by the Bulldogs. They run the slot man deep that pulls the defense away. They bring Delamar back underneath. He breaks the tackle and the, the Razorback baseball commit makes a big play. There's another run by Setzer as he'll take it to the 30 yard line. Pick up of two yards that time. Those are the kind of talent that Delamar has. He leads Fayetteville in the 7 a classification, the team in receiving, and he's gonna go play baseball at the next level. Second down and eight with the ball at the 30 yard line. Thanks. Lindsey, send a man in motion, and he's gonna look to throw. Back left side, middle of the field. He's at the five, stretches it out, touchdown. Coming up with it for Fayetteville. It was Lack McKinney with the touchdown. Too much time, RJ. You, you cannot let Drake Lindsey drop back when you've only got a three-man rush, and he had plenty of time to dissect the defense, and McKinney wide open down the middle on the post route, and the Purple Dogs strike back. So on to kick is going to be Nathan Catchell. He's 66 of 68 on extra points this year. The extra point is up and good. And we've got a tie ball game with five minutes remaining left here in the first quarter. Seven to seven between Fayetteville and Bentonville. Let's check in with Kyle Deckelbaum on the sidelines. Well, guys, as Bentonville comes back out here, expect a heavy dose of Mr. Brown. Their entire offensive meetings during that series were focused on getting him the ball. They're going to try to get it to the future hog, C.J. Brown, as much as they can. By the way, an athletic family, C.J. Brown, his sister Jada plays basketball at Vanderbilt. And you guys were talking about Jason Delamar, who did limp, and we're going to check in on his injury. But the guy's future baseball commit, he actually called Dave Van Horn like a cool uncle. Might be the first time I've heard Dave Van Horn called like a, a cool uncle. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. You, you, you know what's crazy is that there is a ton, whether it be baseball, football, there is a lot of talent on this football field today. There's no doubt. And, and that's what you expect when you're talking about the largest classification. These two teams, I mean, they're, they're in the contention to play for a state championship every year. Of course, Brian is. Uh, Conway has crept into that conversation to late. It was North Little Rock for a long time. And those are, those are the four or five blue bloods, if you will, in our state. In the last 10 years, you can pretty much pencil in one, if not both, of those teams going to be playing for a championship. Here is Catchell as he'll put a foot into it. He'll be taken at the two-yard line. Bringing it up is going to be C.J. Brown for Bentonville. And Brown's going to take it all the way out to the 34-yard line. That's where ben Bentonville will have it first and 10. Well, that return is, is not going to jump off the stat sheet, but this right here, you see after contact, is why so many colleges want him. The physicality of a wide receiver to pick up nine, maybe even 10 yards after contact is what makes a good receiver into a great one and makes, it, makes you into a college player. Ball's going to be on the far hash mark. It'll be first and 10. 4.50 to play here in the first quarter. Benville's going to line up with two wide receivers set to the left side. Jason Gilmore is going to be the running back for the Tigers. Carter Nye going to look to throw. Has a man. Cross the middle of the field. That's Brown. He's going to be off to the races at the 40. Going to be taken down at the 29-yard line. He was wide open in the middle of the field, Bobby, and there it was just going to be a foot race to see if you could get to him. A great job first by Carter Nye to extend the play, rolls to his right, and the, the breakdown rule, C.J. Brown finds his quarterback, shows him his number, and that's not the player you can leave unattested if you're Fayetteville's defense. I hand it to Gilmore. He'll come right side, bounces off two players, goes forward out past the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Fayetteville start to wrap up. We saw a little bit of it on the kickoff. Purple jerseys are just bouncing off. 
Chancey comes in, just lowers the shoulder, doesn't wrap up there, allows a couple more yards after contact. And Gilmore is a thick running back. Carter Nye going to look to throw, going towards the end zone, and he overthrows his intended target, trying to hook up with Luke Kuhn that time. The pressure finally got home to Nye. The protection's been really good for Bentonville up to this point. And I thought Fayetteville took another unnecessary risk there. A little pump fake from Nye, the defensive back on the far side bit on it, and almost got toasted for six. Third down and five. Ball to 24-yard line. Now going to split out to the right side. They're going to put C.J. Brown in the backfield. Going to hand it to Brown. Going to run with it left side. And he's going to get about a yard on the play. Maybe setting up something for a little bit later. Of course, you want to try to get the ball to one of your best playmakers as much as possible in many different ways. Maybe look for him to maybe go a little play action, try to sneak him out of the backfield. Well, it's fourth down, and they're going to keep the offense on the field about a 40-yard field goal attempt from here. The flags aren't moving too much, but you know, that, really between the 20 and the 35 is really kind of no man's land for both these squads. Might as well roll the dice and go for it. Gilmore is going to be the running back for Bentonville. Wing back set off the right side. Two receivers in the formation. One with the hard count. Gives it to Gilmore. Works right side. Doesn't get the first down. Only got about a yard on the play. Fayetteville holds and it's a turnover on downs. Great job by Fayetteville defensively to stack up the point of attack. They win the battle at the line of scrimmage. And the defense gets the football back for their offense and a chance to build off that momentum as they just put one in the end zone. I mean, are you a little shocked that they didn't try to air it out there on third down? Maybe a little bit. Down. Yeah, maybe trust your quarterback Carter and I. Maybe go play action, see if you can get those defensive backs to break up for a linebacker to break up just a touch and try to dump one over their head for in that intermediate five to eight yard range. Well, especially with how how good they've been finding players in the middle of the field. Here's a pass play that for Fayetteville as they work it into the hands of Jason Delamar. And Delamar is going to be able to pick up eight yards on that play. Just a quick wide receiver screen. It's as good as a handoff. That's really what we've become accustomed to seeing uh, from not only Fayetteville, but a lot of teams in our state. Why hand it off when you can just dump it out to your receiver, let your playmakers get the ball in space. Fayetteville's going to put three wide to the right side. They're going to hand it off to Setzer, and Setzer's going to take it out past the 35 to the 36-yard line. The boys up front and get a push for Fayetteville, move the chains. Now we've got a drive going. Nice job by 75 in purple. Desmond Peterson to pull around. Get a hat on a hat. So it's first and 10 with the ball at the 36-yard line. Three wide receivers in the formation. Wing back set off the right side. We'll move to the left as Lindsey's going to look to throw again. A fine Delamar, and he has nowhere to go. I lost a yard there. Delamar didn't read the block well of his other receiver. He should have taken that one to the outside as the receiver kind of had it pitched to the inside. But that's a bang-bang play. And now Fayette will face with a third and long. I say he did get a yard on the play, so it's correction second and long. Yeah, second down and nine now. Second down and nine. Fayetteville's going to put four wide receivers to the right side of the formation. Lindsey alone in the backfield going to look to throw him. Going big ball right side. And he's got a man. He's out of bounds. He caught it. Coming up with the reception was Katavian Taylor, the sophomore. He had a step out there, and you can see the big arm of Lindsey even back into the wind a little bit. Perfectly placed, and a great catch. Gets two feet in bounds. It's his audition tape for the NFL. Right. Only need one in high school, but two will do as well. So Fayetteville is in Bentonville territory with the ball at the 32-yard line. Lindsey swings it left side into Graves' hands, and he has nowhere to go. Got about a yard on the play. Lindsey already over 100 yards passing here in this first half, 8 of 11. It's about as efficient as you can expect. 
Well, it's second down and nine. We're down to a minute 10 remaining here in the first quarter of play. A lot of pressure on these corners for Bentonville to make one-on-one -on -one plays. They've done it so far. Which they, that's, that's what you want to do if you're a Fayetteville offense, just worry you down as you break, miss one of those tackles that can result in a big play. And he's going to look to throw. Got all day in the pocket. Going to move around. Now he's going to be taken down. Coming up with a sack for Bentonville. It was Rivers Wiseman. 81, the senior linebacker, comes around the edge and does a nice job of gathering himself, finding the football, and getting Lindsey on the ground. Five yard loss to the play. That brings up a third down and 14 with the ball at the 36 yard line. They don't have heights and weights in the roster, Bobby, but Wiseman's not, he, he's not near as big as Lindsey. That's like bringing down a house right there. Three wide, go right to the left, right side. They set up the screen. Work it back left side into the hands of their wide receiver, J.J. Spafford. And that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. We've got a tie ball game between Fayetteville and Bentonville as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Looks like we have some new health in the marketing department. Action! Hi, I'm Susie Arrow with Everett Buick DMC. I think you need to work on your line better. How about you do it? Family owned, customer friendly. Family owned, no friendly. Come see us at Everett Buick DMC. I 30 at Alcoa Exit. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by. Give your family a once in a lifetime experience at the Little Rock Zoo, at Arkansas's largest lantern festival. Glow wild at the Little Rock Zoo. After dark, bring your family to a radiant wonderland where imagination sparks. Discover 40 new lighted mystical creatures and returning favorites at Glow Wild, a once in a lifetime experience. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. When you choose Conway Regional, you're choosing a healthcare partner rooted in your community. With nine primary care locations in five counties, we believe in building lasting relationships centered on trust and personalized care. Let our family care for yours. Vaping addicts you to nicotine and can prematurely age your lungs to those of a 70-year-old. Don't get lost in the fog. Learn more about the hazards of vaping at projectpreventar.org. Southern Loft is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS. It is our mission to tell your story by adding color with our furniture. And that's why Southern Loft is a different kind of furniture store. For more information, go to mysouthernloft.com. Arcare is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Arcare network of medical clinics and pharmacies helps to keep you in the game playing your best. Our car, our care, excuse me, so you can live your story. Lindsey's back on the field. They've got four wide to the bottom of your screen. Lindsey going to look to throw across the middle of the field, and his receiver stopped his route, fell down, and that's going to do it for Fayetteville on this drive. Bentonville's defense holds once again. There's some contact there at the top of the route, RJ. Just maybe some incidental contact. One of the players went down. Lindsey was looking for the penalty flag with no call, and a big fourth down stop for the Tigers. So it's first and 10 now for Bentonville. We've seen both these two defenses hold on fourth down. Thought this was gonna be a little bit of a shootout there for a little bit, but now the defenses have stepped up in this championship game. 
Crazy things happen when, when these two hook it up. You can go back the last 25 years. Fayetteville and Bentonville have been one of the best rivalries in our state. And the only thing that's predictable is this going to be unpredictable. Three wide set to the near side. As they'll throw it across the middle of the field to, to C.J. Brown. And he's very near the first down. Good patience there by Nye to trust his protection and wait for Brown to clear that initial wave right in the middle. Finds a slot and he picks up a dozen or so and moves the chains. So first and ten from the 37-yard line. Catches 46 yards already for Brown. Five wide in the formation this time as Carter Nye is going to look to throw. Nye going big ball down the middle of the field. And it's caught down the 19-yard line. Coming up with it was Karsten Pate, the wide receiver for Bentonville. A big throw there. You mentioned five wide. There's going to air it out. They beat the Fayetteville defense, has to come back for the football a little bit. What a great adjustment by Pate to make the play. And now they're in the red zone. They're going to go five wide to the right side. Set it up, but there's penalty flag. And movement on the right side of that offensive line. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First step. Today's officials, you've got our head referee right there, Michael Catton. The center judge is Mike Rottinghouse. The umpire is Brent Jones. Linesman's Will Pruitt. Line judge James Stevens. And back judge Brad Rickett. But here's a bit of trivia for you. The linesman, Will Pruitt, the commissioner of the Great American Conference. There you go. Here's Carter Nye on an end around to C.J. Brown, and he can't go anywhere. Great job defensively. Caden Spencer right there recognizes the misdirection, gets in the backfield, and now Bentonville way behind the chains. They're going the wrong direction as it's now going to be second down for Bentonville from the 31-yard line. 21. They've got to get all the way down to the 10. 109 now, 5 of 10 passing, but 134 yards. Three wide to the right side. Chris Ficklin is the running back. Nye falls on it. He's on the ground, and that's going to be another big loss. Nye wasn't ready for the snap. He was looking over to his right, left side of the defense, and just wasn't ready for it. He's down to a knee to try to pick up that football, but he's ruled down. And now the, this drive that had gotten all the way down to the 20, pushed all the way back to the 37. They've got to get to the 10 yard line to get a first down. And it's third down and 28. You're thinking field goal at absolute worst on this drive, and now you're, the punt is certainly in the equation. So they're going to go back to that five wide set, three wide to the top of your screen. Around your top receiver to the far right of the formation. Now I can look to throw under pressure. Under pressure, throwing it to the right side. There was not a receiver over there as he was getting rid of it. Should be grounding. There it is. And they throw the penalty. Intentional grounding. Offense. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Loss of down. Four down. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. A loss of down. And this drive went from the 20. And now it's going to be all the way back at their own 44 yard line. Yeah, I, I don't have my abacus, so I can't tell you how far this is. This is going to be fourth and a uh, really long way. I believe they call this a Benton County mile. <laughs> Just got construction on it more than likely. All the 43-yard line. Fourth down and 47. It's a long way. Got that on your bingo card today. You are a winner. Punt is away. It'll be fair caught down at the 21 yard line. So, with 9.25 to play here in the second quarter, we've got a tie ball game 7 to 7 between Fayetteville and Bentonville. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. 
for everything that matters most to you and your family. There's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville are proud supporters of Arkansas PBS Sports and of Bentonville and Fayetteville High School football. Join us on and off the field because at Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville, we're always in your corner. Learn more at ebanking.com, member FDIC. New documents are being digitized every day, and every day the DNA databases get bigger. Sometimes the most moving revelations come from the paper trail. Sometimes some of the most shocking revelations come from DNA. I think I found out a little bit too much. <laughs> That's what makes us special. The magical way that we combine genealogical research with genetic research. And we're the first program in the world to do that. Without your support, there would be no Finding Your Roots. And without your support, there would be no PBS. Well, our student athlete all-star preview. Look at here, Terrence Brown from Jonesboro. He's a quarterback, a senior, and the most the best part, he's got a 4.25 GPA, plans to play collegiate football, study sports medicine, and become a football or basketball coach. Congratulations, Terrence Brown. Here's Fayetteville as they're gonna swing it out the flats. And we'll get about a yard pickup. Bobby, I, I didn't even know you could get a 4.25 GPA anymore. I thought it stopped at four. Yeah. Apparently the uh, kids are smarter these days than they were when we were in high school. They didn't go up that high back then. Thought it stopped at four, but things have changed. Either yeah. way, add my last three semesters together, I might not. I think you could add my high school and college together to go for five. So it's second down and nine from the 22 yard line. Lindsay's gonna look to throw across the middle of the field. Has a man down at the 40 yard line. That's Jason Delamore. This play was made possible by, by the, the blitz pickup by the running back. I believe it was Setzer in the backfield, picks up the blitzing linebacker from the outside, gave Lindsey just an extra moment to get rid of the football and a perfect strike right down the seam. Four receivers in the formation as they'll swing it out right side to Spencer. Spencer will go out of bounds at the 49 yard line. He's about a yard shy of the first down. Long throw for a quarterback to make. Staying in the middle of the field, that one comes out almost all the way to the sideline. It's just on a rope. It's just receiver chance to make a play. It's second down and one from the 49. Stops the clock as he went out of bounds. Work a little wildcat right here. As they hand it right side, to our Taylor's going to take the direct snap and go right side. He'll get into Bentonville territory as he crosses the 45 down to the 43-yard line. You can tell they want to find different ways to get the sophomore the football. He made the great catch on the far sideline. This time they go wildcat with the option read, and he picks up another first down for the Purple Dogs. Clock is moving down to 8.05 left here in the first half. Big Lindsay has two wide set to the left side. Going to hand it off. The Setzer and Setzer is going to get a couple on the play. Setzer did a nice job of trying to be patient, kind of hide behind his, his pulling offensive line, but just not a whole lot there. The Bentonville defense did a nice job to converge and make the play. So it's second down and eight. Ball at the 43 yard line. Lindsay's in the shotgun. He's gonna have Setzer set to his right with two wide set to the left side of the formation. Now we've got Whistle. Abel took a timeout right before the delay of game. Timeout, Fayetteville. That's their first charge timeout at the half. Well, with 7.08 to play here in the first half, let's head down to Kyle Deckelbaum. who has got a little tidbit on Casey Dick. 
Yeah, you know, guys, I'm standing on the sidelines here at Fayetteville, and I think you guys talked about sort of the nervous energy for this team early on, but they have certainly settled in. I think you saw sort of a release of energy at that last big defensive stop there on fourth and half a field. But you mentioned Casey Dick, and I was talking to him before the game, guys, and he can't help but walk on this field and have his eyes drawn to a certain corner of the end zone here at this stadium. Of course, Casey Dick to London Crawford and fourth and one, and, you know, Houston Nutt was a big part of the reason why Casey Dick was hired in this role. It came at the recommendation of Houston Nutt, who has said that he is here today. And you think about kind of this journey so far for Casey Dick at uh, Fayetteville as the head coach, 6-4 in 2019, 4-6 in 2020. Of course, they had that harsh ending uh, that was, you know, unfairly mocked on Monday Night Football. And how about the way his team and his quarterback bounced back, guys? 29-8 and eight since. Yeah, pretty impressive. I actually saw Houston as I was coming up the elevator today. It's one of three uh, he Arkansas head coaches at, at one point or another. That, that are here today, yeah. Uh, one current one, one pass one, and current coordinator. Here is a pass play on second down and eight, and nice coverage that time by Bentonville as they were trying to hook up with Locke McKinney. And that'll bring up a third down and eight. It's good coverage by Bentonville. Just get your hands on the receiver, force the incompletion, and now it's Third and long for Fayetteville. Again, kind of a no man's land. You think if they don't pick up a yard here, you might be looking at the punt team. But if you get half of it, maybe the idea of going forward on fourth down starts creeping to your mind. Five wide in the formation. Third down and eight. Four man box for Bentonville. They're going to drop everybody into coverage. Lindsay under pressure, steps up in the pocket, trying to bounce it around. Throws down the right side of the field, and it is intercepted. It's intercepted down at the 28-yard line. Only the third interception of the season for Drake Lindsey. Parker Schatzman, the junior, makes the interception there. And Lindsey, maybe the Ill first ill-advised throw of the contest, kind of floats that one out there for his receiver. Didn't put enough on it. Gave time for the defense to converge. And you mentioned it earlier, RJ. How do you not have a tip ball interception? And there, Bentonville's defense comes up with a huge play. I mean, what's been really impressive about this game for both teams is that they've been really good between the 20s. Yes, they have. And then, but once they're, you know, the defense's back is against the wall, that's when they've really tightened down and, and have been really good for both both squads. That's a sign of a, good, a very good defense as well. I mean, it's supposed to be tougher to score points. You know, teams a lot of times will change up what they do offensively and defensively between the 20s. And that time you got to stiff it up, and Bentonville's defense makes the play. That was Chris Ficklin right there, the sophomore. He's got a nice run of eight yards. Takes it out to the 36-yard line. Boy, I tell you, for guys like that, that that are able to get an interception, and it's really kind of a badge of honor when you get a guy coming in that's only thrown two picks all year, and you're doing a state championship game. Carter Nye calls for it. Gonna fake the handoff, going to look to throw. I think that ball was partially hit and that'll bring up third down. Yeah, Landon Jones got to the quarterback right when Nye was trying to let go of that one. Luckily that one just fell to the turf harmlessly because he took a shot in the back and almost picked off by a diving Isaiah Taylor. So it's third down and two with the ball at the 36 yard line. Bring it in an extra offensive lineman is Bentonville. We'll have to hurry to get this one in. Play clock's already down to 13. Carter Nye is going to move his running back, Ficklin. He's going to head straight up the left side, and he'll get enough for the first down as he'll take it out to the 39-yard line. It's just big on big right there. Both teams brought an extra lineman into the game, and Bentonville wins the advantage for the battle of the line of scrimmage, moves the sticks. Both these teams have been content with just three down linemen and rushing three. We haven't seen many blitzes from either squad, and I say that, and Fayetteville are going to stick with the four-man front here. First and ten. Going to hand it off. Ficklin to work the left side. We've got penalty flags at the 36-yard line, and he'll be taken down at the 45. That one's going to be coming back. That hold is pretty obvious to everybody in the stadium. Put Bentonville behind the chains. 
holding offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. And let's start to see these teams try to run the football a little bit more now. As, as I mentioned, it's such a light box, three, four, maybe even just five players within the tackle box. Bentonville's attempted just 10 rushes, has negative three yards in the contest. Fayetteville, nine carries for 32 yards. So it's first down and 20 now. We're going to have the pistol set. Nye is going to look to throw across the middle of the field. He's got a man, and he's going to work it back up the left side. It's Kasten Pate, Kirsten Pate, excuse me, who was able to get the deflected pass and make the most out of it as he takes it all the way down to the 36-yard line. The pass was almost intercepted right through the hands of the Fayetteville defender, Jaden Holtz, and Pate did a nice job of adjusting to the football, making defenders miss, and they're inside the 40. There's a handoff. This is going to go to Gilmore. And Gilmore is going to pick up a couple on the play. About a, a swing of emotions for Fayette. Well, you think you're about to get a big play defensively, and all of a sudden you've got to rally up and chase the football down. 169 yards through the air for Bentonville's offense. Second down and eight with the ball at the 34-yard line. Two receivers to the near side on the Fayetteville side. Some movement. Ball start. Snap and track. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. So that'll back about five yards, and that'll take it to second down and 13 now. Put the ball at the 39 yard line. Carter Nye has two receivers to the near side. Takes the handoff, gonna be under pressure. Steps up, throws left side, has a man down at the 29 yard line. That time was able to hook up with JJ Spafford. Great poise by Carter Nye. Just, he knows he's about to take a big hit, but able to get all the way back to his left. Rose works all through his progressions. And receiver on the comeback. But what was going to be a six or seven yard loss turns into a, a nice gain and now a third and short. The ball is going to be resting at the 29 yard line. It's third down and four. Jumped off sides. And the outside linebacker came running up and that time for Fayetteville that was Jaden Holt who came running up and he just he got in the neutral zone defense five yard penalty results in a first down so that gives Bentonville a first down as it'll move the ball to the 24 yard line ninth first down of this first half for the Tigers and that's the cheapest one they'll get Have, have to have more field awareness than that. Jump into the neutral zone, it's free five yards. Wing back set off the left side. Nye's gonna look to throw, has a man, that's Brown, as he'll sidestep a defender, fall forward, down to the 12 yard line. It's too easy for Bentonville. He recognizes the hole in the zone, Brown just sits down it, and Nye hits him, another first down. Look, Brown is a good player, boy. He, he's able to find open spaces and the yards after catch are where it's pretty impressive. Move him to the far right of the formation, to the top of your screen. Nye going to hand it off to Gilmore, and Gilmore has nowhere to go. Aiden Spencer is, we've called his name more than already a handful of times here today, RJ. He's really dominating up front, and another play in the backfield there for Fayetteville. I don't think Carter Nye was ready for the football. He kind of caught it in his belly, and it, watch this. Uh, it didn't get it before the snap, but he, he just kind of got it and was, okay, well, we'll hand this thing off. Yeah, it looks like the offensive line wasn't ready for the snap either. They weren't even out of their stance by the time that Spencer was by him and making the play. So three receivers bunched on the right side. Nye is going to look to throw. And he'll be taken down back at the 29-yard line. 892 converge Landon Jones 
And big Isaiah Perez converged for the sack and for the second time, RJ, we've seen a drive for Bentonville get inside the 20 and get pushed all the way back because of penalties and big defensive stops. And they're actually gonna mark him down at the 30 yard line. So now it's a third down and long, third down and 28. They've got to get down to the two yard line to get a first down. Well, last possession, they faced fourth and 47 and now third and 28. Two receivers to the near side as Gilmore's gonna be the running back. See if they bring pressure, they're showing it. Carter Nye gonna look to throw, has a man across the middle of the field and he'll be taken down, coming up with the reception with Eli Brooks, the junior. Nye did exactly what he was supposed to there. He recognizes the pressure, he finds the hot route. Just going right up the seam, easy pitch and catch there to Eli Brooks, and now it's fourth and ten. We'll see if they trot the field goal unit out there or going to leave the offense. They might just let this play clock roll all the way down and burn a timeout, not give Fayetteville too much time on the back end of this fourth quarter. Balls at the 12-yard line. Looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. You see Coach Jody Grant kind of wander out there. He's going to probably take a timeout when this one hits one. Down to six seconds on the play clock. And they're going to call the timeout with 58 seconds remaining here in the first uh -huh. half. We've, we've got a time ball game. I like the clock management there. Is it, you're likely going to kick this field goal at fourth and ten, uh, try to take the lead, but more importantly, you don't get Fayetteville a whole lot of time. The Purple Dogs have all three timeouts left. After a kickoff and the, the, the field goal attempt, likely you're looking at roughly 45 seconds for them to go potentially 75 yards. So, I mean, Bobby, if you're if you're Bentonville, you get the points, though. I mean, right? And, and then your defense has been playing really well. You take the lead. I mean, that, yeah. the more, most important thing is you take the lead, and potentially you're taking this lead into halftime. You're the underdog. No, nobody thought you were going to be in this game, let alone have a chance to win it. And so if you can take a 10-7 lead at the half, it'd be really hard to pass that up because that's when the doubt starts to creep in because you got a lead on a team who's undefeated, hasn't been tested really that many times all season long. Maybe that doubt creeps in their mind as they're sitting there for those 25 minutes at intermission. I'd say probably the biggest test for Fayetteville this year is the Conway game, wouldn't you? Yeah, you know, Southside, you know, gave them yeah. a test in the second round of the playoffs as well. Uh, of course, Fayetteville always schedules a tough non-conference. Um, I mean, they're battle-tested. I mean, Greenwood, uh, they put it on them pretty good in the, in the benefit game way back when. Of course, those don't count. But So they played some really good teams. Here's the field goal. It's up and good. Got a 25-yard field goal, and it's good, and Bentville takes the lead 10-7. Nice job by Nico Martinovic. Boots that one through. Bentonville takes the 10-7 lead. Conway Regional Health System is proud to support, spotlight, and celebrate Arkansas student athletes and Arkansas PBS sports. Since 1921, Conway Regional has provided complete health care services to the growing communities of North Central Arkansas. For more info, just go to conwayregional.org. Well, don't forget here in about 53 seconds gonna have a good halftime for you stick around because uh, the folks at Arkansas PBS have put together some really good packages that uh, highlight different things in the state of Arkansas and you want to stick around for that during the halftime show is that'll be coming up here in about 53 seconds right now Bentonville leads at 10 to 7 and Martinovic is going to kick this one off as he'll put a foot into it. It'll be taken down at the four-yard line. Picked up and brought up the right side. For Fayetteville bringing it up was Taylor, and Taylor's going to take it out to the 19-yard line. Now with 45 seconds left and all three timeouts, we'll have to see how aggressive Fayetteville wants to be. Of course, you've got... You know, one of the best quarterbacks in the state and Drake Lindsay in an explosive offense that's averaging well north of 40 per game. I'd expect Fayetteville to kick, take a couple shots. Of course, you always have to play the other side of it. You got two quick incompletions. Maybe you give Bentonville the football back in good field position. Well, that's five wide in the formation to start this drive as Lindsay's going to call for it. They're going to go with a swing pass left side. Put it into the hands of Jason Delamar and he'll get eight yards out of it. Just the drive starter, start the clock, you know, get the chains moving, so that way you could put yourself in second and short, and maybe if you pick up that first first down, that's when you start to use those timeouts. 
Four wide in the formation. Lindsey going to call for it. Looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Still looking. The man. As the man down at the 45 into Bentonville territory. And he's down at the 41 with six seconds remaining. And it looks like Fayetteville's going to call a timeout. Took a lot of time before that play was snapped. And you're, you're going to see right here the, the Bentonville defense has kept their the eyes in the backfield way too half. long. And that allowed Mason Spencer to kind of sneak out from behind. And the, Lindsay puts it on him, a big gain. And now Fayetteville's going to have maybe a chance at a quick out, maybe four or five yards, or they got to take a shot at the end zone. And, and Bobby, I think... Drake Lindsay was trying to get the ball. He, he kept calling for it. Mm -hmm. And you saw him at one point, he kind of rocked backwards thinking he was getting ready to get the football. And I don't think his offensive line could hear him because he, he called for it about three times before he actually got it. That play took you know, easily 20, 25 seconds. You know, Fayetteville is going to be tasked with, you know, again, a, a, something quick. Got to get down if it's caught in the middle of the field. Call another timeout or, or take a shot at the end zone. We saw East Point set County score in the final play of a half yesterday. Lindsay, 14 to 25, 185 through the air. Let's have the one tip ball interception. I've been impressed with both these quarterbacks so far. Three wide are going to be set up to the bottom of your screen. Lindsay's going to look to throw. Going towards the end zone. Throws it up. It got knocked down, and that's going to take us to halftime. That's 10 to 7 is our quarter. score. As Benville, they lead Fayetteville here in the 7A state championship game. Kyle Deckelbaum is trying to find Jody Grant. He's got him now. Coach, you guys keep knocking on the door there. What do you do to sort of get out of that funk and finish a drive? Well, we, we're moving the ball, you know, in between the 20s, but we got to be able to move it once we get down in the red zone. And we've, we've had a couple fourth downs that we've got stopped on. So we just got to keep operating offensively and find a way to turn those uh, red zone appearances into touchdowns. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Thank you, Kyle. That was head coach Jody Grant for the Bentonville Tigers as they lead it 10 to 7 as we head to halftime. Stick around. Got a great halftime show for you as the Bentonville Tigers lead it 10 7. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. 1958 was a year of change in America. The Hope Diamond was donated to the Smithsonian Museum. The microchip was invented. NASA was created by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And in Arkansas, deep in the recesses of Bull Memorial Stadium, a group of prominent Little Rock businessmen founded the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. The original mission of the Hall of Fame was simple enough. To recognize and induct individuals and teams that have brought honor to the state of Arkansas, and we do provide scholarships for student athletes. It's a great place for young people to get inspired, to come here themselves, to walk through and to read these stories and think, someday that can be me. We inducted our first class in 1959. We have over uh, 500 inductees. Basketball players, football players, baseball players, archery or in sharp shoot, trap shooting, runners, golfers. Horse race car racing. It's a great cross-section of what sports is. For more than 60 years, the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame worked to honor those most accomplished athletes who call the natural state home. Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame selection process is simple but a little complicated. You can go online and nominate your favorite sports hero. That person goes into a master database. Selection committee comes up with those 50 people on the voting list for each category. That is mailed out to the dues-paying members. You pick your top five. Both come back, the top two vote getters in the regular category automatically get in. The top vote getter from the senior category automatically gets in. And then the board votes on the remaining inductees. And then you wait for a call. When you get the call, it's a big deal. You know, when I was inducted to the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame, or however, when I got received the call, 
I feel like I've reached something. Being from a small town, rural area, which Arkansas is a lot of that way, and uh, when you get picked for something this prestigious, it has a huge impact on your life. It seemed to me it was the cap of my athletic career. I just seem like all the hard work has paid off for me. All the people you meet, all the connections you make. They welcome you. It, it was remarkable to me the night that I came to be inducted because the former inductees, they want you to feel like, hey, you're part of us now. Clearly, sports in Arkansas isn't all fun and games. Sports is a common ground that brings everybody together, and we compete. We want to see a good battle, but we want to shake hands afterwards, and, and there's a mutual respect for everyone that played. Athletics teaches you discipline. It teaches you teamwork. It prepares you for life. It got me a full scholarship at the University of Central Arkansas. Eventually, the Hall of Fame had grown to need a new home, and by early 2007, construction was complete on the almost 14,000 square foot Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame Museum, located in what is now Simmons Bank Arena in North Little Rock. All the communities in the state have an opportunity to make sure their heroes are remembered, and they do that. You walk through this Hall of Fame, see a helmet from some small community here or a smaller college maybe than the Razorbacks are. Jerseys, pictures, statistics, all kinds of memorabilia. Like a picture of Scottie Pippen standing next to a polar bear for some reason. It's just like creating the milestones of the people who started and who laid the foundation. Their favorite thing is always the bears back there in the car, the Martin Martin car, but they actually get to see how sports in Arkansas started. Everybody as they were growing up had their favorite sports heroes. We preserve those sports heroes for the different generations. They can look here and say, wow, this person overcame this. They came from maybe an impoverished background or maybe a, a, a beginning that wasn't necessarily headed towards sports but ended up there someday. We have a great sports legacy here. It's a great representation of what this state is about. Hardworking people who endured, who achieved. And so to have that legacy as a in a permanent place here. I hope people embrace that and hope they come here and enjoy it. Look at the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame as motivation and say, hey, one day that's going to be me. Now you know the history. You can be a part of the future of the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. It's just the way win is. You know, it's called the city with a smile. Whether it's a Friday night football game, or it's a family in need that's going through a hard time, or it's a community going through a tornado, the people of Wynn rally around each other. We have a serious situation, a new tornado warning in the city of Wynn. Tech, Wynn, can hear me? Wynn. You need to be in your tornado safe spot right now. There's I grew up here, graduated from here in 2000. A lot of memories here. Wynn High School, there's a lot of tradition here. I've been here my entire life. All my family's went here. It's, it's been very big. The school year was going really normally. I was actually uh, in the middle of like classes and stuff, not expecting anything to change. Yo, we were excited because it kind of felt like it was the first year post-COVID. It's my senior year. I went to play college football. Uh, I was in off-season for football. Uh, I was playing soccer too. And we were really excited. Things were going along um, all the way up to March 31st. And, the last thing in the world on our mind was having a tornado destroy our school and our kids yet again not having a normal year. That radar is showing you uh, the hook echo that just now went through wind. That is a debris ball just to the east of wind. One of my maintenance guys called. He said, you got to get down here. He said, the school's gone. You know, the tragedies happen. You know, the storms hit. We, we can't, we, we had our moment of, you know, just breaking down. We can't stay in that moment. What do we do to help our community? I got a call from one of my buddies and he told me the turf was in his front yard from the football field. Right after I hear that the tornado hit the field and there's no football, and I'm thinking, okay, what's the next What's the next step? Like, what are we gonna do? We were right out here on that field and there's debris everywhere, there's tile. It's the first time we really got to meet with the team. They got bulldozers behind their bulldozers in their school. You know, the kids look on their eyes is like, what kind of nightmare have I woke up to? It was a, it was a surreal feeling, something I'll never forget. We have to find a way to make sure our kids don't lose anything. They don't lose prom, they don't lose graduation. Obviously with the field being nothing but gravel, we went to a church field for spring football practice because we didn't have turf. We've been out on the grass. We just kind of made the most of what we had. We could have easily sat back and just said, man, what do we do? 
but that's a, a testament to our leadership. And it's a testament to our teachers, uh, our students, to put in the extra work it took to get us to that point. Once the temporary campus got done, it was a easier transition. It was more of like a normal school feeling. They did a great job getting our facilities back. I was in pads, and it was, it was an amazing feeling to get on turf. From the difference from turf to grass, it was it was an amazing feeling. I always, you know, lived through the kids, and uh, well, they were teared up. You know, it was a it was a it was a big big deal for sure. Looking in that stance, seeing the win community all back together, everybody that stayed through that adversity, it was all a very come together moment. It's an awesome community that we live in here. We're playing pretty good. So many fans packed out every game. And it's just not that they show up when there's loss or when there's when there's grief. They show up for everything. That's what they do in Whitehall. Our superintendent then brought him in. You know, you think that someone that played in the NFL and a big star quarterback, he didn't come off like that at all. You could tell he was getting ready. He was ready to get to work, and he was excited to be the head football coach. He just comes in and he introduces himself, and he immediately flashes this huge smile and cracks a joke, and it's his laugh. Like he always had this laugh. It was a working relationship, but then it turned into he was literally my best friend. Well, you knew who he was when he got here, but he didn't want that. He wanted to just be Ryan. What he brought was a big heart for the kids, a huge personality, just a simple, humble man is what I saw. He wanted to give back to kids and give back to the sport that he loved. Coach Mallet always said Ben was the first football player that he met when he came. The house he rented was right across the street from Ben's house. He knew that Ben was gonna be special. He said, man, I love that kid. Please join me in a moment of silence, as we remember Benjamin Ritter. Here to accept Benjamin's diploma is his mother. I woke up that morning with some text messages and calls, and a couple of those calls were from Coach Mallet. When Ben passed away, that's when I really found out how close they were because of how bad it wrecked him. It changed him. We really, really did. I cared for him a lot. He's like my son, basically. <laughs> it's just, it's tough. When I mean, you lose a kid like that and know that he was going to go off and do great things, and uh, that one, uh, that one hit me hard. It's just sad seeing Coach Mallett react the way he did. He went on the field and hugged everybody on the field to start crying and told us all that he loved us. We all use each other to kind of piggyback on, try to Look to each other for comfort. Everybody was there for each other. Mallet being the name that he was, you know, fake media or whatever, posting stuff when we text the group chat, yo, is this real? I was like, there's no way. So I called him. I was like, there's no way it's true. Let me call him. And he didn't pick up. I was like, wow, this is real. I was in shock. I had just talked to him about an hour and a half before. I just melted to the ground. The feelings and the emotions were so raw, you can't hardly describe it unless you're in that moment. To be honest, it didn't seem that it could possibly be real. Our district had lost students. We had lost a coach that our kids adored. It was more than what we could handle as a district. As a whole community, I think they came together to help us football players out. They had counselors from every school, even elementary schools there. Knowing that they were there for us helped out a lot. It's just the outpouring of affection and, and love that they show in this community for you. Is, it was awesome. It was about what you expect from Whitehall. They were, they were there. Just that outpouring of love that was felt in not just our community, but surrounding communities in the state. Just as the love that was shown to us, um, it's healing. And we as a community can get through this. We've gone through all these things and every day we are moving forward.
Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. You've spent years exploring Arkansas with us. Did you know Arkansas PBS is also here to help you explore your financial options to be more prepared for the future. Almost two thirds of Americans don't have a will in place. Your thoughtful planning of a will or trust can help protect you and your family. It can also help guide the future of public television in Arkansas. Explore your options. Request a free estate planning booklet from Arkansas PBS today. Back here at War Memorial Stadium, Bentonville leads 10 to seven over Fayetteville in the Class 7A state championship game. Bobby Swalford, I'm RJ Hawk, as we come to you high above War Memorial on this beautiful Saturday. And let's look at our first half stats to uh, see how both these teams compared in the first half. And look at that, Fayetteville, 217 total yards of offense, Bentonville 190 passing game. Bentonville's got that, 209 to 185. And then Fayetteville's ran the ball a little bit more, 37 to 26. First downs are in favor of Bentonville, 10 to 8. And on third, da uh, third downs, Bentonville's converted more time of possession is in favor of Bentonville as well. Bobby, surprised by any of that? Yeah, the one thing that really jumps off the stat sheet, and I think it's probably throwing the, the system for a loop, is Bentonville has negative 19 yards on the ground because you got to remember a lot of that has to do with sacks. And the fact that they still have a lead and they're negative in, in the rushing stats is, is really hard to fathom. But... That's where the passing game's been so effective. Well, let's head down to Kyle Duckelbaum real quick as he's got head coach Casey Dick for Fayetteville. Well, coach, these are two teams that clearly know each other really, really well. Give us a sense for the main message in there. Hey, we just got to go finish. You know, we got to be better on third down. Offensively, I think we're one for five right now. Uh, so that, that's hurting us a little bit. But, you know, defensively, we're playing great. We're not, you know, they get down here and we, we're able to force them to turn the ball over, stop them on fourth down. We just, we just got to go finish. We're playing good. Good things are going to happen. Um, we just got to go finish the game. Right, thanks, coach. Thank you, Kyle, as that was head coach Casey Dick as his favorite Bulldogs trail by three. Well, let's look at the stat, the highlights for this uh, first half between them. There's really not a whole lot of them, uh, but it all started early in this one. And look at that big catch right there for uh, Bentonville. It's coming up with it was Pate, and Pate got the scoring started. It was 7 to nothing. then Fayetteville bounced right back. Coming back up was McKinney, and he got the touchdown. Boy, it just you saw wide open receivers, Bobby, by both these two touchdowns. Yeah, th there was a lot of movement in the passing game. Both these quarterbacks have been pretty effective. Carter Nye for Bentonville, 9 of 15, over, already over 200 yards. Uh, Drake Lindsey, 14 to 21, 185. But, but you mentioned in the first half, there's a lot of stuff going on 20 to 20. There's not a lot of stuff happening in the red zone. These two teams are buckling down once they get inside the 20 yard line and, and making points at a premium. This is how you have a, a game that's got over 400 yards of offense, but only 17 points. Yeah, man. So it'll be interesting to see how both these two teams manage to, to really bring their offense back to the field. We've seen a lot of defense there in the first half. Bobby, give me some keys for both these two teams. Uh, the, to me, the, the first thing for Fayetteville is they've got to get after Carter Nye. They've got to get more pressure, whether it's, it's bringing extra, whether it's bringing four down linemen on a consistent basis, whether it's bringing linebackers on a blitz. They've got to get some way to get Carter Nye out of rhythm because he's picking them apart in the passing game. And then the other side of things, I think Fayetteville needs to run the football. Bentonville's doing the exact same thing with a light box. I think Fayetteville needs to trust that offensive line, try to go to Christian Setzer a little more, only five carries for just 13 yards, maybe get the ground game going. That'll soften up the secondary, get their eyes maybe coming to the backfield, may lead to an open receiver or two. You know, the Fayetteville offensive line has done a really good job protecting yeah. Lindsey so far. It's just getting guys open downfield. The, the secondary for Bentonville has done a really good job. Yeah, I mean, this is almost a an exact blueprint of what we saw last night, what Bentonville's doing, the same thing that Greenwood did against Little Rock Christian. They're just dropping eight and saying, hey, our three guys are going to get there eventually, and we think our, our eight guys in coverage are going to do a better job than your receivers are, and right now that's holding true. So both teams are done with their warm-ups, and we're just about set and ready to go. Hey, I want to go down to Kyle one more time. Kyle, um, the weather seems like it's warming up a little bit, and the wind has really not been a factor in this one, has it? Not at all. I can't remember, guys, a state championship weekend this warm. It just feels like it's always, you know, we've had some great weather at times, but it just feels like we're always in, at the very least, some heavy coats. It got warm out here, and you guys can take a look at the, uh, the flags above the scoreboard virtually still it is just perfect perfect conditions see who wins the 7a championship 
Thank you, Kyle. And we're just about set and ready to go as both teams are making their way back out. Glad to have you along wherever you may be across the state of Arkansas as we've got a more state championship football tonight as it's the 5A state championship game between Parkview and Shiloh Christian. That'll kick off at 6.30 tonight. You can watch that right here on Arkansas PBS. Bobby and uh, Wes, you guys will have that game tonight, right? Oh, I'm not on that. Uh, oh. AB Brazil making AB Brazil, yes. football debut for the season. Yeah, he and Wes are going to be on the call. I'm going to put on my other job hat and <laughs> do some things here yeah. around the stadium. I do two jobs at one time. It's going to do one job tonight. Uh, Fayetteville's going to receive the second half kickoff as Bentonville started the ball game with the ball, and so Fayetteville will have it as kicking off for Bentonville. is going to be Nico Martinovic. He'll put a foot into it, and it will sail down on the right side, and it'll be picked up at the 11-yard line for Fayetteville and brought out past the 15 to the 17-yard line, bringing it up for Fayetteville. It was Caleb Johnson. And that's where they'll have it first and 10 to start the second half. Well, the one thing that both of these teams have really done a good job of, and this is why you're seeing it's only a 10 to 7 game, there's, there's been no short fields. Even the one turnover that we had came in the red zone on the tip ball. So anytime you make a team march 85, 75 yards, uh, good things are going to happen because more times than not, an offense is going to break down. We've seen a, a, t a pair of Bentonville drives get to the red zone and get pushed way back because of penalties and busted plays. I hand it off to Setzer, and Setzer's going to go to the 15-yard line. He went backwards. Yeah. Uh, they, try, they try the outside zone there. I want to go north and south. You know, it's, it's a three-man box. Try to attack uh, the open lanes that are already right there. Try to take advantage of the numbers that you have because you get more than east and west. Uh, you're going to give time for the rest of that defense to converge. So it brings up a second down and 12 after the two-yard loss. Ray Lindsay, the quarterback. Receiver to both sides. Fake the handoff to the look to throw. Pump fakes. Comes back out. We have a penalty flag down, and Lindsay's going to be taken down at the 10 yard line. Likely a hold. They are talking with the Bentonville staff. They're going to decline this big play by the Bentonville defense here in the opening drive of the third. Holding offense. That penalty's declined, third down. So they're going to have it at the 10-yard line. It was a two-yard loss. Excuse me, it was a five-yard loss. And now you've got a third down and 22 for Fayetteville. Three wide set to the right side. Lindsey. We'll look to throw, steps up in the pocket, float ones, float ones to the left side. That's La or Luck, excuse me, and Luck goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Great route, great throw, and it's a first down for Fayetteville. Yeah, the protection held up just long enough, and Lindsey finds Luck on the deep crosser. A perfect throw, hits him in stride, and they convert to third and long. So it's first and 10 from the 34-yard line. Lindsey throws in the flats. Out to Delamar, and Delamar gets out to the 34-yard line. No gain that time for Fayetteville. Bentonville's done a really good job of, of reading those wide receiver screens, those quick swing passes. That time they even faked the counter in the backfield and swing it out to Delamar, but he shut down right at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Wing back set off the right side for the Fayetteville offense. Lindsey going to look to throw, going big ball. Has a man down at the 35-yard line. He'll fall out the 31. Coming up with the reception, it was Mason Spencer. That's where those swing passes and those screens come into play. They fake the screen there. They sneak the would-be blocker out on a go route on the outside. And Lindsey places a perfectly thrown ball. He brings it down, fights the defender off. And the Purple Dogs, who are backed way up third and 17, are now in business. Ball at the 31-yard line, it's first and 10. Three receivers set to the right side. Fake the handoff again. Looking to throw, goes right side, has a man. 
at the 21-yard line. It's a big-time throw right there, RJ. Just a little hook right at nine yards, and he just puts it on on his numbers as he's going down to the ground, low and outside, where only his player can make a, a, a play on it. That's just that's high-level football. That was Mason Spencer again making that reception. Not always the 40 or 50-yard throw that gets you a college scholarship. If you can do that on a consistent basis, you're going to be playing on Saturdays. And now we've got whistle. spot the ball just a touch. Stacked receivers on both sides of the formation. Setzer comes to the left side of Lindsey. Lindsey going to look to throw. Comes back left side. Never saw his receiver. Never turned around. That was Delamar. Fayetteville's picked up the pace just a little bit offensively. Maybe trying to wear down this, this Tiger defense. That time the quarterback and receiver not on the same page. Well behind his intended target. Third down and one. Ball at the 21 yard line. Two backs in the backfield with Lindsey. They're going to hand it to Setzer. Setzer just has nowhere to go. He may have gotten back or he may be at the first down marker. It's just, it's just all going to depend on the spot. Another, another really nice play from Rivers Wiseman. Stretches that out, tries to prevent the Fayetteville rusher from getting the edge. I think we're going to have to bring out the chain game. Those guys get some steps in. Yeah, they, I mean, it's, I think that he's got the, the first down, but being that the ball is on the Fayetteville side and the chains are on the Bentville side, they're going to bring him all the way across. Got it. Yeah, he did get the first down, so it'll be a new first set of downs for Fayetteville. Thought we're going to have to pull out the, uh, the old index card. Who is that, Dean Steratore? Yeah. Can't pull the index card out of his pocket. But we're good. I'll never forget that moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about an index card? Yeah. The new referees keep those kind of things. Yeah. So it's first down and 10. Ball at the 21-yard line. This is where these two offenses have got, have got to figure it out. The defenses have owned the red zone. Well, they're just a half a yard outside of it. Fayetteville got to kind of find a way to come out with the points. Lindsey going to hand it off on the end of round. That's Delamar, and Delamar got past the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Daniel McCoyne again makes a great play in space. You saw the, the, the hesitation, the stutter step out there by Delamar. He didn't fall for it. And he makes the great play and, and holds that to a gain of one. Second down and nine, three wide set to the left side of the formation. Lindsey's going to take the snap, look to throw across the middle of the field, and in and out of the hands of his receiver, that was Mason Spencer. Good coverage that time by Bentonville. Yeah, Daxton Horton was right there. It looks like 41 in coverage and just excuse me 31 the will fusselman just makes contact with his receiver right when the football gets there outstanding job by the defensive back and forces the incompletion 751 to play here in the third quarter bentonville 10 fayetteville 7. So it's third down and nine. Lindsey looking as a man down at the nine yard line. Gets past the five, stretches out to the one. We're going to call him down at the two yard line. The first down and goal now for Fayetteville. Excellent execution there from Lindsey. Just rifles one right in the little seam. Not a lot of space there for Delamar to get open, but he makes the play. And I hand it off to Setzer. Setzer. Trying to get to the end zone. They're going to say he's down short. A really long drive for Fayetteville. Trying to wear down that Bentonville front, but they still hold him out. But second and goal from inside the one. Keeping up on five minutes, maybe by the time they snap the football. 
Of course, all potential scoring plays are automatically reviewed in the booth. So if they feel like they got to the goal line, they'll, they'll stop it and review it. But the officials are good with that call. Bring back off the right side. Sets are set to the left. And now here comes the whistles and the review. The previous play is under review. So the booth called down and said, hey, we want to take a look at this one. Yep. So any potential scoring play or any potential turnover is automatically reviewed throughout the entire championship game. Well, there's Setzer. You see him. He puts his head down, Bobby. And it's that second effort. Did he get the yeah. ball across the line right there? That, that's a really good angle. So if we can roll that back, where is the knee at? It may be hard to see because so many of the Bentonville defenders are right on top of it. Right there, the ball is on the goal line. You remember, it doesn't have to cross. just has to touch that initial goal line. We'll see if his knees are down before that ball does indeed touch the plane. Well, no, his, his, so his knees were still up, and the ball was stretched out over the white line. I mean, it's a bang-bang play right there. And, and look, if you're doing it in real time, that's hard to hard to call. And you've got 81 who's right in the way of the, the, the official who's down the line from this angle. I might say that's a touchdown. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Yeah, that, that is a... Uh, but is that conclusive? That, that, that's the, where the officials are going to look for it. It has to be conclusive evidence that he did, in fact, cross the goal line. And here's her call. The ruling on the field stands. Second down. Well, they're going to say it stands. So no score. They're going to say it wasn't conclusive. Well, um, well, yeah, I, once again, though, like, to your point, you, they've got to have enough evidence to overturn. And, and the angle's not perfectly no. down the line, which no. makes it tough as well. Makes sense. Yeah. Second to go. Lindsey going to hand it to Setzer, and he'll get in this time. Lowered his head, lowered the boom, and got in. Really, really impressive drive for Fayetteville. Take the opening kickoff. They're backed up all the way third and 17 before they pick up a first down. They get the long throw across the field, and they just methodically march it. And now they take the lead in the contest. So Fayetteville leads it 13 to 10 now. And on the kick for Fayetteville is Nathan Catchell. Extra point is up. It's good. And Fayetteville, they lead it 14-10, 6.52 player in the third. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by Southern Loft, the proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS. It is our mission to tell your story by adding color with our furniture. And that's why Southern Loft is a different kind of furniture store. For more information, go to mysouthernloft.com. Give your family a once-in-a-lifetime experience at the Little Rock Zoo at Arkansas's largest lantern festival. Glow wild at the Little Rock Zoo. After dark, bring your family to a radiant wonderland where imagination sparks. Discover 40 new lighted mystical creatures and returning favorites at Glow Wild, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. When you choose Conway Regional, you're choosing a health care partner rooted in your community. With nine primary care locations in five counties, we believe in building lasting relationships centered on trust and personalized care. Let our family care for yours. Vaping addicts you to nicotine and can prematurely age your lungs to those of a 70-year-old. Don't get lost in the fog. Learn more about the hazards of vaping at projectpreventar.org. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. For those looking for communities, looking for meal options, Raising Cane's is known for their hand-battered chicken fingers and special sauce. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. Nathan Castle is going to be on to kick off for 
Fayetteville after they take the lead 14 to 10. And for Bentonville, they're gonna have C.J. Brown, Conrad Schmitz, and Luke Kuhn back to receive this kickoff. As the kickoff is away, and it will sail into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. Well, we've talked about all the coaching, uh, the coaches that are in attendance today, and the one that is here to see uh, the big quarterback, Drake Lindsey, P.J. Fleck is in the house, Bobby. Is, uh, he's out here walking around, watching his uh, future quarterback, Minnesota's head football coach, P.J. Fleck, made the trip down. And he, Drake Lindsey's putting on the show for his potential future coach. And 19 of 28 here. passing, 271 yards, and a touchdown. There's a reason that he's coming down to make sure that his prized possession is still coming to be a gopher. So Bentonville is going to have it first and 10. They're going to hand it off on this first play. Let's give it off over to Gilmore. Gilmore is going to get out to the 24-yard line. Let's check in with Kyle Deckelbaum real quick. What's up, Kyle? I was going to add one thing there. I'm not sure many people realize the connection between the Lindsay family and Minneapolis. I'm not sure how many people realize Jim Lindsay played for the Vikings after his Razorback career. Running back, special teams, actually was on the team that lost Super Bowl four to the Chiefs. So that's the connection to Minnesota. And, you know, a lot of people have asked me, they're like, Minnesota, of all places, why there? And it uh, makes sense now, Kyle. And you got to believe watching film for Drake Lindsay's. That's why they've offered C.J. Brown as well, the Bentonville receiver. Here's a big running play by Ficklin, and Ficklin's going to take it down to the 39-yard line. Got the first down. First two plays of the, on offense of the second half might tell you what the conversation was at halftime for Bentonville. You know, they go into the locker room with <laughs> negative 19 yards rushing. That didn't sit well with Jody Grant and company. So they go back-to-back -back plays on the ground and pick up the first down. So first down and 10. Is the ball at the 39-yard line. Puts him at 15 carries for the game. Uh, perfect zero yards. Carter Nye trying to do something with it. He found a man. And that's Ficklin. And Ficklin's going to get out of bounds. What a play by Carter Nye. Second time we've seen Carter Nye have to go all the way back to his left. And as, as soon as he's about to take a big shot, able to dump it off and Ficklin does the rest. That was almost a potential disaster. Turns into a seven-yard game. You know, seeing uh, some of these quarterbacks play, last night we say we saw Kane Archer make a play as he was falling out of bounds to get a first down. Carter Nye right there almost takes a sack, and he's able to get rid of that ball. Got some great talent here in the state of Arkansas. Second down and three, and we've got penalties. Both teams have five. Five-yard penalty. Down. Teams had five penalties in that first half. Number six there on Bentonville. They've all been the five-yard variety, though, so I guess you can live with that. So the flinch by the left guard. So second down now for Bentonville. And second down and eight. All at the 41-yard line. Going to hand it to Ficklin. Ficklin works left side. There's a penalty marker down back at the 40, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 46. Yeah, this is this is what killed Bentonville in that first half. They'd mount big drives, and penalties would, would push them way back, and now we've got back-to-back -back flags on these last two plays, and this one likely going to move the Tigers back even further. Holding offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Time 25 to play here in the third quarter, and Bentonville's going the wrong way. At the 31-yard line now. They've got to get to the 49 to get the first down. So it's second down and 18. Carter Nye. Looking to throw, has a man across the middle of the field. That's C.J. Brown, and Brown's going to be taken down at the 47-yard line. Be about two yards shy of the first down. Every time Fayetteville brings extra rushers, Nye's done a great job of getting the ball out, perfect protection, and finds Brown on the skinny post, and just two yards shy of picking up another first down. 16-yard gain that time by C.J. Brown. What's his numbers look like today? 
Scroll down a little bit farther. C.J. Brown, full catch of 74 yards. Third down and two. Ficklin is the running back. They're going to hand it to him. He'll be caught and drugged down right at the first down marker. It'll be a first down. And what a great job of Bentonville overcoming that 18 yards to get the first down. And yeah, the time the extra effort kind of spun down by the defender, and that actually allows him to pick up the first down. Right just shy of the midfield stripe. First down and 10. Ball at the 49 yard line. Quarter nine. Blitz comes and got picked up and he throws it away. Boy, that time, I'll tell you what, Ficklin picked up a linebacker that was coming straight up the middle and he did a great job with, with the blitz pickup. Yeah. Ficklin just takes on Landon Jones head on and Nye does a smart job of getting rid of the football as quickly as he can and throws it before his receiver's out of his break. But that's that's the uh, play that circles. That doesn't mean anything right now, but a great blitz pickup by the running back saves his quarterback. Well, Jason Gilmore checks in at running back now. And they'll have two wide receivers to the near side. They're going to give it to Gilmore. Works left side, and he'll be spun down. He'll get about five yards on the play to bring up second down. So third down and five with the ball at the 46-yard line in Fayetteville territory. And now we've got penalties. No hiding that. Big Jackson Oliver knew it. He's already jogging to the sideline. So that's going to put them just about a half yard shy of the first down. So it's going to be third down and one now for Bentonville. Gilmore is in at running back. Nah, he's going to fake the handoff, going to look to throw. Going big ball. Has a man, and he drops it. Love the thought, you go play action. Most people thought it was just gonna be a simple handoff on third and short. A perfectly thrown ball by Carter Nye, but his receiver could not make the play. That was Luke Kuhn, who had it go off his hands, and now he looks like he's hurt. That's a, You can't ask for a better throw in there. In that situation, that should have given Bentonville the lead. Just couldn't make the play, but hopefully Luke Coons okay down there in the end zone. I think he landed on the football and it knocked the breath out of him. Let's hope. Let's hope that's all it is. Carter and I, 11 of 19, 232 yards through the air. Those two quarterbacks have already combined for 500 yards passing. We still got a quarter and three minutes to play. Now it's fourth and short. You got to believe this is go forward territory if, if, if this isn't handed off to Ficklin or Gilmore I'd be really surprised fourth and inches you got to trust the big boys up front to move the line of scrimmage just ever so much allow yourself to fall forward and get a first down Bentonville stays with just the two defensive tackles and two defensive ends so four man front they're going to walk the linebackers up fourth down and one Ficklin's in, they're gonna give it to him. Gets the first down as he crosses the 40. Boy, he is a hard runner, isn't he? Yeah. And what's crazy is, Chris Ficklin, the sophomore, came in, carried the ball 46 times for 308 yards this year. Yeah. J Jason Gilmore 
has carried it 124 times for 867, but Ficklin's been the better running back today. Yeah, Gilmore's been the workhorse all season long, but sometimes you got to go with the hot hand. And maybe is this a reward, too, for the, the unheralded play of picking up the blitzes? You know, obviously pass protection, that's important as well. Sometimes you do the little things, you get more chances at doing the bigger things. Luke Coon just checked back in the ball game as they swing it out left side over to Eli Brooks. Brooks is able to pick up a good chunk of yards, about seven yards on the play. That'll take the ball down to the 32-yard line. Just the second possession of the quarter. Fayetteville put together a five-minute drive. Now Bentonville's doing the exact same thing. Down to two minutes left here in the third quarter. Ficklin's in at running back. They're going to hand it to him straight up the middle. He'll get to the 30-yard line. Another third and short coming up. Those stress-free play calls you have. You can do it. You can throw it. You can run it. You're an offensive coordinator. This is a situation you want your offense to be in. You know, you would think that uh, you would see more teams do like the Eagles do and go with the tush push. Yeah. You just... Not everybody has got a quarterback who can squat 600 pounds, though. Oh, true. But they all have big offensive lines that can get a push like that. Yeah. Third down and one. Ficklin's in at running back. And they're going to not go to him, but they're going to air it out. C.J. Brown's wide open. Touchdown. He's won the battle at the line of scrimmage, R.J. He, he won the release. Got the step beyond the defender. And the old Randy Moss saying, if I'm even, I'm, I'm leaving. And C.J. Brown showing why he's an SEC caliber receiver. So Bentville retakes the lead 16 to 14 with a minute 10 remaining here in the third. Nico Martinovic is going to be on and the kick is blocked. It's it was blocked and the extra points no good. So it's a two point game that could be big later in this ball game, Bobby. That could be absolutely massive. We've seen special teams be the demise of more than one team here at War Memorial Stadium. You can't return it back. That's why it's blown dead. Uh, but that point looms large because you remember last week, it will be Conway by a made field yeah. goal. So now a field goal would put uh, the Purple Dogs back out in front. Well, and you know what's interesting? We'll go down to Kyle here in just a moment. But Martinovic has been the backup kicker because Ryan Fernstrom has been their kicker all year. He was 71 of 74 on extra points. So I'd be interested to see why he's not kicking today. And Martinovic is. Let's go down to Kyle real quick. Kyle. Yeah, guys, the messaging, the messaging from the Bentonville defensive coaches there. This is a fourth quarter game, and that is exactly what we wanted. They said our offense is going to score again, and you know what? They were right. They said show some resolve. This is exactly what we want, a fourth quarter game. Martinovic is going to kick off for Bentonville. As it's going to be taken at the 11-yard line and brought up to the 30, to the 40, and he'll be taken down at the 45-yard line with the football running it up that time for Fayetteville. Caleb Johnson. That was Caleb Johnson. This nice job by the kick return unit. Creates a lane right down the hash. Pick up of about 35, 40 yards on that return, and Fayetteville's got good field position for maybe the first time all afternoon, yeah. at least at the start of the drive. You've still got a minute left here in the third quarter with great field position. They could easily try to get a score here right before the fourth quarter starts. There's three wide receivers in the formation. Makes the jet sweep. And Lindsey's going to get out of one tackle, but he finally goes down for a loss. The sack by Bentonville, that's but the third time today that they've gotten to Lindsay, And that'll bring up second down now and 13 for Fayetteville. Fayetteville's going to come out with four wide receivers in the formation. There's a pass play across the middle, finds McKinney. And 
McKinney's going to be taken down right at the first down marker at the 45. We're going to give it to him. See if Fayetteville wants to run another play. Just 14 seconds left. The clock now runs. We'll see if Fayetteville wants to get another snap or just take this to the board. We're going to let it run down as we're down to three, two, one, and that's going to do it for the third quarter. So put the four fingers in the air. We've got a good one in the 7A state championship game. Bentville leads it 16 to 14 over Fayetteville. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Looks like we have some new help in the marketing department. Action! Hi, I'm Susie Everett with Everett Buick DMC. I think you need to work on your line better. How about you do it? Family owned, customer friendly. Family owned, no friendly. Come see us at Everett Buick GMC. I 30 at Alcoa Exit. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state. And I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games. And that makes it available for not just the fans in central Arkansas and south Arkansas, but fans around the entire state. I can only think of the kids in small towns, and this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers. And they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville are proud supporters of Arkansas PBS Sports and of Bentonville and Fayetteville High School football. Join us on and off the field because at Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville, we're always in your corner. Learn more at eBanking.com, member FDIC. Fayetteville and Bentonville duking it out in the 7A uh, state championship game, but here's how we got here. Spafford with the touchdown catch for Bentonville started things off, but the Purple Dogs answered right back. Lack McKinney, touchdown pass from Drake Lindsay tied things up at seven apiece in the first half. And, and the first big turnover of the contest came. This tip ball was picked off by the Bentonville Tiger defense, the third interception of the season just for Fayetteville. These two teams haven't been able to put any distance between themselves. Lindsay to Delamar set up a short run here for Christian Setzer and that put Fayetteville out back in front. But just a few moments ago, Bentonville goes to the old reliable C.J. Brown, his 16th touchdown catch of the season, wide open. And that's how we start the fourth quarter. It's 16-14. Bentonville's got the lead, but the Purple Dogs have the football on the plus side of the 50. So Fayetteville's gonna come out here on first and 10 from the 45 yard line with four wide receivers in the formation. Lindsey fakes to the left side, fumbles the football, fumbles the football and Benville's gonna get it at the 50 yard line. They try to double move out to the left of the offensive formation. It wasn't open there. It looks like a little bit of miscommunication by the receivers, and Lindsey had nowhere to go with the football hit from behind, and the Tigers forced a second turnover. I'd like to see who got his hand on Lindsey. Watch this. The edge rusher's coming around, and he just lost it. it. Ben Pearson. Pearson was able to put pressure on him, knock the ball out. He didn't. Lindsey didn't stand a chance. 42 for Bentonville. Jonah Knapp with the recovery. And that's the first big, big turnover here this second half. Now the Tigers with a two-point advantage. Chance to add to it. 16-14, Bentonville leads Fayetteville. And in the fourth quarter, C.J. Brown in motion from left to right. Carter Nye going to hand it off to Gilmore. Got a big running lane. He Pulls bubbled it, it. Picked up by Fayetteville. Fayetteville comes up with it. It was Delamar. Back-to-back -back turnovers. That might have been the longest run of the game for Bentonville or close to it. The ball security not there and the another other three. Fayetteville's got duplicate numbers, and so sometimes it's tough to figure it out. It's Eli Rose. Yeah. 
recovers the football, and what a huge break for the Purple Dogs as back-to-back -back turnovers, because Bentonville might have had a chance to put some distance in between them. Yeah, I apologize to Eli, because he got the recovery. You know, that that's the one thing in, in sporting events. You should outlaw the double numbers, because when, when, when you have big plays like that, you see the first one, but boy, Eli Rose comes up with a big one for Fayetteville. 100 options, zero to 99, <laughs> one of them. So Fayetteville back in business with three wide receivers in the formation. Lindsey going to look to throw. Comes back right side with it. And he's got a runner. That's Spencer. And he'll run out to the right side. Fayetteville's won a penalty flag. And here it comes. And it comes in from behind. A late hit out of bounds. So the 12-yard gain is going to turn into 27 yards for Fayetteville. Well, when you get that penalty on your home sideline. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Late hit out of bounds. They were going to get that call, weren't they? <laughs> I mean, everybody on the Fayetteville sideline was asking for it. I believe uh, this would be a glass case of emotion type moment if you're Fayetteville. You're, you're down about turning the football over. Then you get the, the recovery on the other end. Now a big play and a penalty. You're inside the 35. A good block on the outside by the wide receiver for Fayetteville. Oh, yeah. He was three, four. Yeah, there wasn't much contact there. But it did happen three or four steps into the white. And Fayetteville's the... Maybe, maybe because it is on their home sideline, they get that call. Ball at the 32-yard line. They're going to give it to Setzer. Setzer is going to take it down to the 31. One-yard gain. Bring up second down. I want to say hello to my buddy Danny West, who's watching this game. He covers high school sports all over the state. He and his family are watching in tonight here on Arkansas PBS. Great job by Pearson to not be fooled by the counter play. Swallows him up for just a gain of one. Brings up second down and nine with the ball at the 31-yard line. Stacked receivers on both sides of the formation as Drake Lindsay's in the shotgun. Lindsay going big ball across the middle of the field, and it's in and out of the hands of Mason Spencer. Perfectly thrown ball, and Spencer couldn't bring it in. Yeah, Spencer just might have lost the ball a little bit in the sun, had to kind of readjust. That's a perfectly thrown pass there behind the defense, just off his fingertips. Those throws right there are the reason why Drake Lindsay's being so highly recruited. So third and nine now. i got to believe this is four-down territory for Fayetteville. So we'll have to, don't have to get it all here. Lindsay checking with the sideline. So it's now third down and nine from the 31-yard line. Lindsey, tunnel screen, left side. And coming up with it was McKinney, but he's going to lose yardage on the play. You're hoping just to pick up three or four yards there, get into a fourth and manageable situation. But that time, the pass not handled cleanly, and the defense was there either way for Bentonville. And now it's fourth and ten. It's great coverage again, though by Bentonville. They've done a great job on these, these screens to the wide receivers. That time, Christian Farrell right there as the catch was made. Fourth down and 10 with the ball at the 32-yard line. Setzer's going to line up to the right of Lindsey. Pressure. Going to take the snap, roll right. Lindsey under pressure, gets out of one, comes back. Throws in the middle of the field. He's got a man down to 30, 25. He's going to be short. He'll be short. Coming up with it for Fayetteville. That time it was Kristen Setzer who was able to spring free, and he came up just about two yards shy of the first down. Looked like he had nothing but green grass, but at the last moment, Parker Schatzman comes in and makes the play. A first down, I mean, potentially a touchdown saving tackle, and it turns it over on downs. Just threw his right hand out there to trip him up. A huge play. If he doesn't make that tackle, Seltzer may be in the end zone. So Benville gets the football back at the 24 yard line. Carter Nye, there's his numbers 13 of 21, 269. He's got two scores today. They're going to hand it off. This time it's Ficklin. Ficklin's going to get nine. He announced attendance of 11,000 and all the millions of people watching on Arkansas PBS are getting their money's worth today. Two heavyweights duking it out. What a great game. I mean, you see, you've seen just about everything in this one with defense, offense. The 
Two wide receivers going to line up on the near side. Going to hand it off once again, Ficklin. And he'll fall forward at the 39-yard line. They get the first down. And yeah, Ficklin is the go-to guy here for the Bentonville Tigers. You mentioned the numbers of really more so of Jason Gilmore in the regular season. But that's Ficklin's 10th carry. He's over 50 yards. More importantly, it, drive extending run there as they pick up the first down. Two wide to the near side. Carter Nye has Ficklin lined up to his right. He'll look to throw. Rolls to his left. Got a receiver. That's Kuhn and he'll go out of bounds at the 47 yard line. That's where a quarterback who can extend plays puts so much pressure on the defense. Reed Slankard it has perfect position on the crossing route there, uh, but he, at the last minute he decides, okay, I'm going to come up to quarterback, and now the receiver is open behind him as they pick up eight. All to 47, second down and two. Three receivers to the right of the formation as Carter Nye is going to be in the shotgun. Eli Brooks comes in motion. Now we've got penalty flag. Tackle moved on the right side. Couldn't hold his water down in the stands for too long. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. They're going for the unbalanced look there after the, the motion of the tight end. They didn't have an eligible receiver on the left side of the formation. Most of the time when you see that, it's going to be run or a quick screen out to the right. Either way, the penalty pushes them back. Second down, they're going to give it to Ficklin, straight up the middle, bounces off one man, crosses the 50, carries the Bulldog, ball comes out. Fayetteville's got it, they just took it away from him. Coming up with it for Fayetteville, that was Rhett Tidwell. Just ripped it away from him, RJ. Ficklin lowers the shoulder. Looks like it's going to be another big game, but maybe a sophomore mistake didn't secure the football. And Great job by Fayetteville to get in there and rip it out. Bobby, I feel like we've played the last half a quarter right here in the middle of the field. It's just been back and forth right here in the middle of the field. Let's head down to Kyle Deckelbaum real quick, who's on the sidelines. Uh, guys, listen, let's make no mistake about it. Pressure's on Fayetteville, right? They're the perfect team, and I get a sense it's a real factor in this game, and you can tell reading the faces of guys here on the sidelines. Coaches were going one by one, high-fiving every single player on that Purple Dog offense, trying to tell them, look, we're gonna get the ball back. Relax, let's go, we just gotta play. Here's the Purple Dogs. That's Delamar who makes the catch, takes it down to the 41-yard line. Just a short crosser there for Fayetteville. Let the receiver do the rest of the work. That's gonna move the chains. First down just outside the 40. Drake Lindsay now over 300 yards passing. Really feel like you've got to pressure Lindsay if you're this Bentonville defense. You've got to send some extra bodies. Trying to get hands in his face. Three wide set to the left side. Lindsay goes right side with it. That's back to Spencer. Spencer's going to fall forward to the 35. At that time, Bentonville was bringing a little extra pressure. Lindsay recognized that pre-snap. He slips it out to his wide receiver. One-on-one -on -one situation, picks up five. So it's now second down and four. Ball at the 35-yard line. We're down to 8.05 to play in the ball game. Drake Lindsay's in the shotgun with four receivers. Now he's got five. Lindsay gonna look to throw on the wheel route. He's got a man down at the 15, and he's gonna be taken out of bounds at the seven yard line. Coming up with it was Katavian Taylor. That was a play, RJ. I thought that Bentonville might have tried to run. We saw CJ Brown line up in the backfield, maybe fake it to him on a wheel route. That time it was Fayetteville. They line up Katavian Taylor, sneak him out, runs a wheel right out of the backfield, and now it's first in goal, Purple Dogs. Ball at the seven yard line. So easy just to forget about the running back in the passing game, and that time he's wide open. Lindsey gonna hand it to Setzer. Setzer, he's gonna dive for the end zone touchdown. 
What a big swing of momentum the last minute and a half. Bentonville's got all of it. They forced the turnover, and now Fayetteville forces the turnover back the other way. Boom, boom, down the field. They've got a lead. Now we'll see if they go for two to push that advantage to six. The difference between four and five point lead doesn't matter. So Fayetteville is going to go for two. Lindsey looks to Casey Dick on the sideline for the call. Two wide split to the right side. Lindsey going to look to throw. Fade route, right side. Got his man in the back corner of the end zone. Touchdown. That was Locke McKinney. A great throw. He's aiming for that back pylon. McKinney's right there. Hauls in the two-point conversion. Now the six-point lead. Well, Fayetteville. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The commitment it takes to be a winner on the field is the same as the commitment Centennial shows its customers. Patience, perseverance, commitment, and resilience are key ingredients for success, both on and off the field. Whether you're cheering on your home team or needing encouragement starting a new business, let Centennial Bank help you make plans for your future. Centennial, for all of life's moments. Member FDIC. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. At Wendy's, we're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburger square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, square's the beef. Well, we have had an, a display of talent between both these two quarterbacks, both these two defenses. There's a scoring drive right there. Four plays, 54 yards, like a minute 12. And here's the kickoff that's going to be taken at the one-yard line. Out to the 20, 21, or excuse me, the 26, and that's where Bentonville's going to get it. Boy, Bobby, I got to tell you, man, I think about all the recruits that are in the state of Arkansas, Drake Lindsey. You got to think, you know Bobby Petrino and, Fed, and uh, Sam Pittman are in the house tonight. They got to be going, man, we got to get an offer to this kid. How he doesn't have an offer to the University of Arkansas is, is mind-boggling. 26 to 36, 350 on the season, yeah. on the day. He has all the intangibles. He makes all the throws. He's got the frame. The fact that he grew up literally miles, not not hours, miles from the University of Arkansas and he didn't have an offer blows my mind. Yeah, that's maybe that's why they're, uh, I'm not going to say that. Yes, as here's Gilmore running with the football out to the 31. But, I mean, you got to get out of your own way sometimes. I understand you've got – Philosophical differences maybe with the scheme that they run or the, the style of quarterback he is. The numbers speak for themselves. Yeah. 88 touchdowns prior to today and four interceptions over the last two years mm -hmm. as a high school quarterback at the largest classification. That is a SEC caliber quarterback. Well, and I will say this, nothing against the, the staff at the university, but they didn't have Bobby Petrino, and he knows quarterbacks. And they, that may change now that he's in, in the offense. As here's a throw that falls short. To Luke Coon. But one thing they did get right, C.J. Brown. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, yeah, yeah, you totally flip the script and go, well, they got that one right because yeah. C.J. Brown's going to be a good one. Yeah, Carter Nye that time had a little pressure in his face, probably threw it before he wanted to, couldn't get enough on the, the deep out routes or the long out routes. He's played well, too, today. I don't want to that, discount that. Carter Nye, is a, he's a college football player as well. Third down and five as Carter Nye's in the shotgun. Nine, three-step drop, going to look to throw. Right side, has a man. Going to be knocked out of bounds. That was Luke Kuhn. Oh, a tough spot there. 
They're going to say when they're going to show him out of bounds, and that's going to be short of the first down. It's going to be close. He caught the ball beyond the marker, but he does go out of bounds before it, but is the defender pushing him out? Maybe this is something that Bentonville takes a timeout to challenge this because they can challenge the spot where maybe where his forward progress is halted. I think Jody Grant's going to challenge it. Yep, they are going to take the time out there and maybe have the, the officiating crew look at it. Look at Coach Grant right there. I'll, I'd be interested to see. I'll, I want to see this replay because if he goes out on his own accord, then the spot's the right. But he's contacted right there oh. beyond the marker. So technically he should be out at the 47, right, which would be the first down. I don't think that's the view that they're going to look at it. It was the last. It was the last shot. Is the one they're they're going to look at. They'll try to see if they've got anything straight down the line. You know, of course, that's not straight down the line. But I think that tells you, looking at the marker, looking where he's contacted by the defender, which will be where his forward progress is halted. To me, that's a first down. We'll to see if they agree. not had a challenge overturned. It was wrong earlier today, so that it's been known to happen. Well, we, we we have not had one challenge this weekend overturned. I thought that the touchdown earlier was going to be a touchdown, and I was wrong on that one. So let's see what they come up with on this. By the way, there's Landon Trusty, who uh, was the head referee of the 6A game last night. He's helping out with the replay crew tonight. The UCA Bear. Denver Bronco. This is the, the longest review that we've had over the weekend as well. So. They're, looking, they're dissecting. They know how important this play is. It's fourth and one or a first down. But the Purple Dogs, have, dogs having all the momentum. They know that they need to get this one right. And also, Bentonville's hoping that this call goes their way. I just think that, once again, he was contacted. As long as he has the ball secured. That's the one thing we can't see from this camera angle, RJ, is, is does he have the catch secured? Well, they had it on the other, the, the other view just a minute ago, right there. So... He's got it right there. So he has, he has clear possession of it. I think when you zoom in and slow it down, which obviously the, the officials on the field don't have that luxury. It, it looks to be a first down. It's just beyond it. Again, they're taking their time. They're going to try to get this one right. And think of, I mean, Think about how good these defenses have been on fourth down today. I mean, the numbers, the numbers on fourth down, one of two and one of three. Yeah, Bentonville one of two. Here's the call. The foot is reversed. The ball carried made the line again at the 37. It'll be first and 10. Bentonville retains their challenge and their timeout. Well, there we go. We've had the first replay overturn this year or, or this weekend, and, and it's a good call. I mean, and, and that's why the challenge system is there. That's why DB Sport and their crew are here, because we want to get the call right. Championship games are the most important thing going on, obviously. You want to make sure you get the calls right, and they do exactly that right there. So it's first and 10 from the 37-yard line. So Bentonville uses the challenge, but they get it back. So they can still challenge. And then a lot of plays are reviewed in the final two minutes automatically. Carter Nye makes the snap. Going to look the throw. Set up the screen. Left side. And, boy, that was almost intercepted. Yeah. That was going to a tough spot there. And I think the Fayetteville defenders saying, hey, that's a pass interference. But the throw is within one yard of the line of scrimmage. So that was off the table. But Fayetteville read that one perfectly. And really wasn't a receiver really close to that. Lucky, lucky that when it wasn't going the other way. Brings up second down and 10. Three receivers in the formation. Fakes the handoff, comes back left side. It's incomplete off the hands of J.J. Spafford. That's, that's two throws on this drive, RJ, that have come up short from Carter Nye. And I think the pressure in his face is making him throw the football before he wants to. That one just takes a nosedive right in front of his intended target. Now it's third and long for the Tigers.
Ball is at the 37-yard line. It's third down and 10. 6.26 to play in this one. Stacked receivers on both sides of the formation. Carter Nye. Going to go big ball across the middle of the field. He overthrows his intended target. Trying to hook up that time with Karsten Pate. He was wide open, just overthrew him. Pate's been the big play receiver. Three catches, 84 yards. And that time he had the defense in his rearview mirror, but just too much on it. There from Carter Nye, the quarterback, and that's six points if he can hit his receiver in stride. So the punting unit's going to come on. Back deep for Fayetteville. They're going to put Holzhauer back there to return this punt. It is a short kick that went straight up in the air. It's going to hit down at the 41, take a big Fayetteville bounce all the way back to the 48-yard line. 15-yard punt. And so Fayetteville's going to have great field position with 6-12 remaining. That's a huge, huge momentum shift for Fayetteville again. Bentonville's got the receiver behind the defense. It's going to be a walk-in touchdown. Instead, you have to punt it, and now the short punt when the Purple Dogs have the ball at midfield, great field position, and potentially, based on the clock, a chance to put this game away. A six-point game as Drake Lindsay is going to line up in the shotgun. Wing back off the right side. Fake the handoff, going to look to throw. Lindsay under pressure, bounces off one defender. And now the second one's going to take him down back at the 36-yard line. Cameron Thornton Meade was able to clean it up. To the second man there to pull down the big Lindsay. And that's a much needed first down stop for the Bentonville defense to put Fayetteville well behind the chains. William Newman, the first defender in there. And that moves the ball back to the 36. It's now second down and 21. Fifth sack of the contest for Bentonville. And able to get after. Lindsay. There's a quick pass down low on the right side as he got it to McKinney. McKinney takes it out to the 41 yard line. You just got to be smart here if you're Fayetteville. You don't force anything. If you are going to force it, make sure it's deep down the field where it would almost work out like a punt. Cannot afford to give Bittenfield good field position and the momentum with the turnover. Five-yard pickup. It's now third down and 18. Bentonville was able to trust their defense last week and pick up a win in the semifinals against Conway. Maybe they play that, play it safe, and do that again again this week. Lindsey looking to throw, going big ball, left side, and it's intercepted down the 19-yard line. Coming up with the pick for Bentonville, it was Christian Faro. Looks out like a punt, though, RJ. Of course, you don't want that as a quarterback going to get your stat sheet and then a turnover column, but essentially that's a 40-yard punt. So Bentonville's got new life with 4.41 to play. They've got the football down to 19. <laughs> 41 yards. The difference in field position there. <laughs> You're never going to be able to tell a high school defensive back, don't catch it, but maybe that's when you bat down yeah. and, and maybe you get better field position on the punt. We're going to back it all the way up to the 16. So it's first down and 10 from the 16. Carter Nye going to hand it to Fickle. Or Ficklin, excuse me. Ficklin's going to go out past... 16 and be taken down at about the 17, so a one yard gain. Second down and nine. I takes the snap, throws the out route on the right side. Fayetteville's right there. And now we've got a whistle or a penalty flag 
as he's marked down at the 20. I don't know what the penalty flags are. have for. to wonder if the receiver was blocking too soon and it's going to be offensive pass interference or was there helmet to helmet contact made on the, on the tackle? to the video board here in the stadium as they show the replay of the hit. Well, you, they're having a big conversation about it right now at the 20-yard line. The head official, Michael Catton, and the line judge are getting together to talk this one over. It's going to be a look at the replay. It's shoulder to shoulder. That's a clean tackle, any way you look at it. We're taking a long conversation about this one. As long as this conversation is, that's what you have to believe it's about. Get the call. Fayetteville defenders are clapping, so they're agreeing with what they're, what they're about to hear. There is no foul for targeting. I got that right. Well, and here's the thing. This is why you've got state championship officiating crews, because these guys, nobody's prideful enough to, to hang on to that flag, and they, they get together and talk about it, and they got the call right. That's the most important thing. They got that call right. That was a clean hit, a great defensive play by Harrison Ray. You know, they're not going to get every call right, but the fact that they were able to sit there and talk about it and, and make sure they get the call right, that's the most important thing. So now you've got a third down and five. It's third down. Nye going to look to throw, scrambles out. Runs it past the 25 and out of bounds. They've got the first down. That, that's a great adjustment by both sides there. Fayetteville has recognized that the quick the quick throw in the middle, maybe that quick post has been there all day long. They drop a linebacker right to that passing lane, and Nye tucks it back in, pulls to his left, sees all the real estate, able to come out the backside, scrambles for the first down. So it's first and 10 from the 32, 3.42 to play. Carter Nye going to hand it to Picklin. He'll go straight up the middle out to the 36-yard line. Now at 3.30 and counting, you have to start asking yourself, is this going to be a four-down territory for Bentonville no matter what? They do have all three timeouts left, but as the clock continues to churn, you've got to believe that they're likely going to treat every play like you've got four downs to get a first down. Well, and I, I think that... As we've seen this pace of the game, it's you, you're you're not punting. I mean, I mean, at this point, you're not punting at all. Two wide to the right side. Carter Nye throws it left side. Has a man. He'll step out of bounds. That time it's Luke Kuhn. Be right at the marker. Going to give him a first down. A quick out's been effective. Bentonville They've hit so many big plays. Had so many receivers running open deep, but they've got to give a little bit of a cushion. They can take that five or six yard out anytime they want it. First and 10, ball at the 42. Three wide to the right side. 92 passing, Carter Nye. Nye's going to throw it again. Going big ball, middle of the field, got C.J. Brown. Down at the 46 yard line. when you know you can trust your receiver going across the middle brown no he's, he's about to get hit he doesn't care he secures the catch and the tigers are in fayetteville territory big one's the running back wing back off the left side nye looking to throw again under pressure going down field has got a man that's coon and coon's gonna go out to the 35 yard line that'll be a first down now fayetteville's got to start thinking about taking some timeouts defensively Maybe save some, save some time on their end. The clock's going to wind. Let's see how quickly Bentonville does want to go. Of course, they've had what, two, three drives to get down to the 20 and stall out, so nothing's guaranteed. First down and 10 from the 35. Nye calls for it. Gives to Ficklin straight up the middle. Big running lanes. Going to be taken down at the 27-yard line. Officially at the 26, excuse me, as they moved it up one. A 
And now Fayetteville's going to call a timeout. Or are they not? They sent a player off for equipment, I believe. Well, Benville thought a timeout was called. Yep. Yeah, so the officiating crew sent a Fayetteville player off for an equipment issue. This is not a timeout by the Purple Dogs, so the clock's winding still. We're under two minutes and counting. Bentonville's going to have to hurry up and regroup. The play clock's at 15. Down to eight seconds on the play clock. Nye going to give it to Ficklin, and he'll be taken. He was hit immediately at the line of scrimmage and got back, and so it's going to bring up a third down and two now. Two teams are content to, to let it play out. Fayetteville's trusting their defense. Nye calls for it. Pass play goes left side to Kuhn. Kuhn's going to get out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Those quick slants, those, those skinny posts have been there for, for, for Bentonville all day, and Carter Knight has puts it on as receiver. He's over 300 yards passing. First and 10, now in the red zone. And they officially mark him at the 20. A minute nine left in this one. Fayetteville leads it 22-16. And in motion from left to right, that's Pate. Nye looking to throw. Finds Pate at the 15. He'll step out of bounds at the 14. Let's have all day to throw the football. Carter Nye is, is benefiting from a great performance by that offensive line. Fayetteville does have two sacks, but 33 pass attempts. It's a pretty good percentage by that offensive front. Minute three. Two wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Carter Nye going to give it to Ficklin. He's going to work the right side at the 10. Goes out of bounds at the 6, but hold everything. We've got a penalty flag down at the... 15 yard line. This could be a massive, massive call against the Bentonville Tiger offense. Holding offense. Yard from the previous spot. Replay second down. Boy, that that's a killer right there. Is I'll back you up 10 yards. And so now rather than being down. At the nine yard line, that backs them all the way up to the 28. Or 23, excuse me. Lock lines. Here's Nye gonna look to throw. He's under pressure and he goes down. Coming up with the sack for Fayetteville. That is Jaden Holt. They haven't done it many times, RJ, but Fayetteville finally brings Five pressure. Out. He's unaccounted for and takes down Nye in the backfield. Just when I said Fayetteville had got a lot of pressure on him, they dial it up there. A big sack as Bentonville takes the timeout. Please reset the game clock to it's 51 untouched. seconds. Untouched, free runner. Nye had nothing to do with the football. They're going to add some time to the clock. They're going to add two seconds, up to 51 seconds here in the fourth quarter. But now, Bobby, I mean. How big was that penalty, RJ? You're, yeah. you're looking at a second and four, maybe second and three from inside the 15-yard line. Now you're back all the way up to the 31. They can get a first down. They've got to get all the way down to the 10 in the next two downs. But you're talking third and 21. Got two timeouts left. Fayetteville has their full allotment of time stoppages. Bobby, and how many times has Bentonville gotten to this area of the field and then just started going backwards? The defense for Fayetteville in the red zone has not been the same defense we've seen the other 80 yards of the field. It's, it's been really impressive to see what no, the players on the field and the adjustments from the coaching staff for the Purple Dogs inside the 20. Okay, so here's corner nine in this Bentonville offense. Ficklin's the running back. Gonna fake it to him. Gonna look to throw. Go, big ball. Left side. And it's going to be incomplete. It's all going to come down to one final play for Bentonville. They're trying to get C.J. Brown on the sideline. I like it. One-on-one -on -one with your best player. And the one thing that Fayetteville's corner, Casey Lehman, did was he used that sideline as an as a extra defender. Absolutely. That's a good observation. Fayetteville going to take a timeout now to regroup, talk about things on this side. Hard to sticks. 
If you want to let a receiver wants to catch the ball five or ten First yards from the line of scrimmage, let them. Everybody rally to the football. That's what Coach Casey, Casey Dick and his defensive unit are going to tell his guys. Keep everything in front of you. Guard the ten-yard line. It's going to be really obvious to us, at least up here, the ten-yard line is the line to gain. It's like the yellow mark on, on the fancy television. That's, that's just say it's the goal line. I mean, essentially, because you just don't want to get there. Hey, let's go down to Kyle Dunkelbaum down the field. We're having some issues with Kyle's headset. We'll check in with Kyle here in a moment. All 11,000 in attendance today. Uh, I feel like the crowd's gotten bigger since halftime. Uh, yeah, it does seem like it's gotten a lot bigger. Certainly gotten louder. So here we go. Fourth down and 21. Fayetteville has five defenders at the 10. That's the line to gain to keep the drive going. And now Fayetteville's backing even more up. They've got three rushers, probably two going to come, maybe one saying as a spy. Five wide. Carter Nye going to just throw this one up, and it's going to be knocked down. And Fayetteville gets a turnover on downs with 38 seconds remain. I tell you what, Bobby, though, there was an opportunity for Karsten Pate to catch the deflection as he was coming up that outside. He had an opportunity to have it deflected to him. Maybe a player down, might be cramping up. It's warm on the field. Kyle talked about it in the pregame. You know, this is December. It's supposed to be cool and, you know, maybe even cold. And these guys are out there sweating on the turf at 60 degrees. And plus the field temperature with the purple dogs are just a couple snaps away from kneeling it. Fayetteville does, or excuse me, Bentonville does have the two timeouts with the 40-second play clock. All it's going to take is three kneels from Fayetteville, and the championship's going back to Harmon Stadium, Harmon Field, and Fayetteville. What a game. Yeah, I mean, this has been, every year, though, the 7A game has always been a, a really fun game to, to watch, to call. Lindsay's going to take the snap and kneel it down. Bentonville does take the timeout. But again, with only one more after this, it's just going to take two knees, and this one's going to be over. Please reset the game clock to 35 seconds. 35 seconds is going to be put on the game clock. Boy, I, I tell you what, though. Two great quarterbacks, Carter and I, and Drake Lindsay. I mean, Carter and I, he played just, I mean, he had 329 yards passing, two, two touchdowns today. Lindsay, 355, a touchdown and two picks. Yeah, the two interceptions, you know, one's off a tip ball, one's essentially a punt. Two, I mean, a high level quarterback play. We, we saw it last night with Kane Archer, played outstanding. That's why Greenwood won a state championship. Both these quarterbacks played well enough today to lead their team to a title, but red zone defense for Fayetteville is the story. I mean, it really is. You know, we talk so much about the running game. Really, no running game for either team. I mean, Bentonville had 68 yards. Fayetteville had 11. If you take away the sack yardage, Bentonville's numbers look a whole lot better. That put them up about, about 100. But you're exactly right. The defenses for these two teams, this camp, they showed up uh, when it mattered. Now, Bentonville takes the final time out. And this is for one more kneel down, and it'll do it. So, Gatorade watch begins. That's our final time out of the half. You just can't say enough about the way these two, two these two teams played on this stage against your, your biggest rival. I know Bentonville West has has kind of arrived the last 10 years or so and become the rival for Bentonville, but these two have gone back the last 20 years back and forth. This maybe is the cream of the crop in Class 7A, and it's going to be the Purple Dogs. We're going to raise a trophy in, in about five minutes. Look at Casey Dick down there on the sidelines. Oh, maybe we get a, a shot of him. Boy, he's fired up. You know, think about. Everything, you know, Kyle mentioned it a little bit ago, but, you know, the controversy that was the last year made ESPN, and, you know, he had to go out and defend his players, and, and for it to come full circle, and now he's here at the state championship, about to raise the trophy. And we've got 24 seconds on the clock. That's what it's all about right there. Just the joy. And there's so much work that goes into it. This team was in the championship game a couple years ago, RJ. Felt like they should have won it. Yeah. Three turnovers in the red zone, had a blocked field goal return for a touchdown, and still had a chance to win the game. Talked to Casey about that earlier this week. 
they, they really felt like they needed redemption based on that a couple years ago. Today they found it. Yep. Well, good coaches meeting at midfield. And, you know, one thing Kyle talked about, they've got great respect for one another. They both texted this week after they both won their semifinal games to congratulate one another. And um, just two outstanding programs between Bentonville and Fayetteville. Yes, I mean, you expect these two teams to be here. And Fayetteville and Bentonville put on a show. It's, this is the best that Arkansas has to offer at the largest classification. I know Condomy was really good this year. I know Bryant's been really good. Today was all about Bentonville and Fayetteville. And they, they proved why they were in the state championship game, to be quite honest. Yeah, it, it, it was a lot of fun. We're going to break down the rest of this game as Fayetteville, they are class 7A state champions. They win at 22-16. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. People would come from miles around to come to 9th Street just to see what it was like. I'm saying this was the mecca of entertainment in the South. We thought we was on top of the world. Man. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. When you choose Conway Regional, you're choosing a health care partner rooted in your community. With nine primary care locations in five counties, we believe in building lasting relationships centered on trust and personalized care. Let our family care for yours. Vaping addicts you to nicotine and can prematurely age your lungs to those of a 70-year-old. Don't get lost in the fog. Learn more about the hazards of vaping at projectpreventar.org. Give your family a once-in-a-lifetime experience at the Little Rock Zoo at Arkansas's largest lantern festival. Glow wild at the Little Rock Zoo. After dark, bring your family to a radiant wonderland where imagination sparks. Discover 40 new lighted mystical creatures and returning favorites at Glow Wild, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Southern Loft is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS. It is our mission to tell your story by adding color with our furniture. And that's why Southern Loft is a different kind of furniture store. For more information, go to mysouthernloft.com. Do you have any idea what the book is worth? Danielle Musselman here, host of Arkansas Treasures, where we share the wacky, weird, and wild collectibles and antiques from around our state and find out what they're worth. So that adds up to a little bit of money. Wow. Watch on Arkansas PBS, the PBS app, or on the Arkansas PBS website. I said I was not going to say wow, but I did anyway. A real-life mystery in Mulberry Springs. Who is Sammy the Sloth? My science teacher is a robot. You've got to be kidding me. Troublemakers from another planet. From another planet? We're on the case. Thank you, Mystery League, for solving this mystery. During the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. I think it's important for Arkansas PBS to have sports because it provides sports on a greater platform to the entire community. And it also gives people in various other communities an opportunity to see other schools and other athletes 
and to have a greater appreciation for not just their own community, but the sports that are available across the state of Arkansas. There are so many lessons that sports provides, and it's one of the reasons why it's so important to the next generation of athletes coming up. For students, it's always more fun to include the arts when you're learning. I mean, just to have expression, to see different forms of entertainment, it always just makes it more fun. And when I heard that my mother was recording different sections that teachers were gonna see, I was excited for the students who will get to use it in their classroom. Arkansas PBS is a place where everyone can see themselves, where everyone can find themselves, where everyone can be a part of something bigger than themselves. Hi, this is Christopher Kimball on the set of Milk Street Television. Not for profit channels like Create are bound by mission. That's to inform, educate, enlighten, and also enrich. So please support Create by also supporting your local public television station. Simply click the donate button at createtv.com for more information. And that's about all there is to it. I told you it's easy. You see, it doesn't take so long. And by the way, thank you. This month on Arkansas PBS. To think that our greed and our industrialization would blink this thing out. We've got treasures that are haunting and maybe haunted. I was terrified of this chair. This is a good photograph of Lizzie Borden. It was a cultural and musical phenomenon that pulsed through the nation's dance clubs. But not everyone was a fan. Only on Arkansas PBS. Well, the Fayetteville Purple Dogs, they are your 2023 7A state champions. They win it 22-16 over Bentonville. See all the hugs. There's the trophy presentation right there. Casey Dick carrying that thing right amongst all of his teammates and, and athletes. Look at that. Look at that group right there. First time we've had a new 7A state champion in six years as the Fayetteville Purple Dogs are the new 7A state champions. We'll be checking in with Casey Dick here in a moment, Bobby, but uh, some final thoughts on this one. Yeah, it's a super heavyweight matchup. That's all, all you can say. I mean, slugfest after slugfest, body blow after body blow. Uh, you look at the box score, 397 yards for Bentonville, 360 for Fayetteville, and you think it's going to be so one-sided that it's gonna, the scoreboard is going to go through the roof. But it's all about defense. I mean, you, lo you look at the third down conversions that were, were solid. Fourth down stops came up on both sides. But red zone defense was, was the name of the game. And, and Fayetteville was able to come up with stop after stop after stop inside the 20 yard line. That not only kept Fayetteville out of the end zone, it kept them from out putting points on the board. Kicked, oh. Knocked them out of field goal range. Uh, and, and that's what it's all about. Complimentary football in, in Fayetteville. Uh, just, just played it just a little bit better. Well, we are just about, we just got the MVP named as Drake Lindsay is your 2023 MVP for Class 7A. And let's head down to Kyle now as he's got head coach, Casey Dick. Coach, I hope you don't mind me sharing, but you were down on one knee, tears hit you. Describe what hit you in that moment. Oh, just emotional for the kids. I know how hard they work just to get to this point. It's something that obviously everybody dreams about winning. We were, we've been here once, didn't get the job done, but man, just exciting finish, proud of our kids. That's who we've been all year. We just we found it wasn't pretty. Found a way to finish. Uh, just just a gutsy performance by everybody. There's winning a title, then there's perfection by beating your rival. Pretty special on this field too. Like I told told my wife, I got some good memories here. Got some bad ones, but uh, there's there's lots of really good ones, especially down there in that corner. We just flip sides. And just unbelievable performance for our guys, man. How about defense wins championships? Uh, just just found a way to win at the end. Well, we're going to just go find a way. It don't matter. don't have to be pretty. Just go find a way to do it. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. That was head coach Casey Dick for the Fayetteville Purple Dogs as they win it today. Let's go ahead and check out some highlights real quick uh, of this game, Bobby. As, uh, there was plenty of them uh, between both these two teams. As it all got started early. As Right there you see for Bentonville, they were leading the way on this one as they got it done early in offense. Spafford got it done with the first touchdown. Then Lindsey came right back. Came back with McKinney's touchdown. Back and forth they went. It was a, really a low scoring affair for the first half of this ball game. As the defense played big between both these two squads, both the Fayetteville and the Bentonville defenses were just all over the field. You see the third interception of the year for Lindsey, but then Fayetteville got back in the end zone after a running 
really just it was one that was re uh, reviewed. They got back in the end zone, and C.J. Brown came back and said, hey, you know what, I am a Division One receiver as well. And then Fayetteville came right back. So I just tell you, back and forth, you talked about just a minute ago, Bobby, it was just a heavyweight matchup going back and forth between these two. It really was. I mean, it's just a blow for blow as we're going to go get the MVP, Drake Lindsey. But these two offenses put up yards in the 20s. Fayetteville, they would punch one more in the end zone. Let's head back down to Kyle. He's got Drake Lindsey. Holy cow. Did you catch your breath now a little bit? Yeah, uh, that was pretty crazy. You know that last drive? Oh, the defense is the best defense in the state by far. You know, they've clutched up multiple times for us, and I couldn't ask for anybody, anything else from them. I sense you guys sort of some nervous energy throughout the game, but 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 how'd you sort of finally get the job done, the, the, the touchdown you needed? Uh, we just kept, kept going. You know, the defense got some turnovers for us, and uh, we just didn't give up. For you to go out like this? Yeah. Family name and everything, pretty special. Yeah, it's super special. Um, God, it's crazy. Um, I don't even know what to say. I'm at loss of words right now. I'm just blessed to be here and blessed to have my teammates with me. Uh, congratulations, Drake. Yeah. Heck of a way to go. Thank you, Kyle. That was Drake Lindsay, the MVP of today's game for Fayetteville, as Fayetteville wins it by a final score of 22 to 16. Well, Bobby, we've got one more for this weekend, and it's the 5A state championship coming up tonight at 6:30. You've got the Parkview Patriots, defending state champions in Class 5A. They're taking on a really, really good Shiloh Christian team. Rematch from last year's championship. The only rematch we've got this weekend. Parkview handled the, the Shiloh Christian last year, but Bo Williams, the running back for the Saints, hoping to change things around this time. So it's the, the defending champs coming up at 6.30 tonight right here on Arkansas PBS. Well, glad to have you along wherever you've been today. Make sure to come back at 6.30 tonight for that 5A state championship. Your final in this one, Fayetteville 22, Bentonville 16. For Kyle Deckelbaum, Bobby Swafford, I'm R.J. Hawk. You've been watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. <laughs>